online at thelibertybeat.com. Today, in a Liberty Beat special report, Liberty Beat contributor Derek J. Freeman of Peace News Now and the Cop Block Radio Show gives us an update on his fight against the denial of his right to conceal carry a firearm in New Hampshire. In July, I applied for a concealed carry license. One man, Ken Miola, denied it. I appealed, and this week the news came back. Judge Burke denied my appeal. I'm disappointed about this decision, but I'm not surprised. The state is a many-tentacled beast, and the different facets of it protect each other. The legislatures did their part by camouflaging a restriction as a right. They call New Hampshire a shall-issue state, but ultimately, they leave the power of permission to the police chief. Then, the police did their part to deny my rights, essentially arguing that because I don't respect them, they are restricting my freedoms. Finally, appeals are made to lawyers who also work for the state. Judge Burke's decision means that while it is perfectly legal for me to carry a firearm openly, it's a crime for me to conceal that firearm. For example, by putting on a winter jacket. Local government bureaucrats in Keene are infringing on my right to bear arms. My next step is to move to the state Supreme Court. I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to do that, but I'll give another update when I speak with my attorney on Monday. You can follow more updates about... It's the Onion Radio News. General Motors reports record sales of its new disposable car. This is Doyle Redland reporting. General Motors has announced a 56% increase in earnings this year, attributing much of it to February's wildly successful launch of the GMC Whim, the first-ever non-refillable disposable automobile. Debuting at a cost of $1,100 each, the vehicles are flying out of showrooms as quickly as dealers can stock them. Whim enthusiast Glenn Shriver. I recently consumed four vehicles driving from my home to Daytona Beach for the first annual Whim Owners Convention. I've already collected all eight colors. Rival automakers are preparing to counter with their own lines of disposable cars, including the Ford Temporaire and the Chrysler Dumper. The 2002 Mitsubishi Ditch will be unveiled later this year with a projected sticker price of $799. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is Free Talk Live. You may take control of the airwaves here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, you've got Ian here. And Derek J. And don't forget, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. It is the week of Christmas, and Derek J., you are preparing to take off for a few days. Yeah, I'm so excited. From the Shire, you're heading down to uh, the Philadelphia area, New Jersey, etc., for the family holiday dinners and snow and all sorts of fun wintertime activities yeah so uh you're gonna be out you're gonna be taking a break from peace news now and the bitcoin shows that you do and like all six or five or six of your various different media efforts yes but that doesn't mean that derek j.me isn't going to be busy i'm going to be updating all of it yeah because there's lots of catching up to do you know you always lag behind when you're doing all these projects so at yes, least I, I do. I'll mean. speak for myself. <laughs> and uh, so I'll be updating over the holidays. Cool. DerekJ.me. So folks can continue to follow you there, and you'll be back in time for uh, next Free Talk Live on Monday night. That's right. So looking forward to that. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk, not right away, but we are going to talk about what happened with you and your gun rights case that had gone to court where you were denied, uh, initially by the police in here in Keene, you were denied your supposed right to conceal a gun, uh, <laughs> and the, apparently the court agreed with the police that you are an unsuitable person, that you are unsuitable. That's the term that the court used to uh, to carry a firearm concealed, because in New Hampshire, it's legal to carry it openly, uh, so they acknowledge that you fully have the right to walk around with a gun strapped to your body in some way openly, just concealing it. They say you're you're not suitable for that, Derek. So we'll, uh, we'll get into the, all the dirty details on that and and you know what might be coming next in that particular case on the way tonight uh also you know i've i've been making an effort uh to try to not talk about bad cops every night on the show just because (laughs) 
It's so pro- it's I mean it's always been something that's been out there for Free Talk Live as far as show prep is concerned. We've always got listeners who are submitting it over at freetalklive.com. Whatever the latest horrifying story is of police abusing somebody's rights, killing someone, you know, burning a baby half to death or whatever it is that they they were doing this week or yesterday or in the last 24 hours, it's just this never-ending cascade of of horrifying and outrageous stories. And that's what it was like before all these protests started springing up over the last few weeks. Uh, Of course, everybody knows about Ferguson, but what happened after that, after the Eric Garner case in New York City, where there was no doubt the police were out of control and totally wrong in that case. You know, Ferguson case, there's some big question marks. We don't really know what happened because there was no video. Um, And witness accounts are different. But the Eric Garner case is pretty crystal clear. That seemed to really spark the flames of protest around the country. That added on to the Ferguson situation. And, you know, we saw, what, about a week and a half ago now at this point, last Saturday, uh, we saw protests in New York City. At least 50,000 people were in the streets. Huge protests. Oakland had them. I don't know, Philly, uh, I think D.C. There was major cities had these huge protests. So it seems like it's coming to a head that people are really finally frustrated enough to do something uh, out in, in the open about police corruption and the, you know, the violence that uh, they're, they're dealing out against peaceful people all across the United States. And somebody's called into Free Talk Live previously to complain, you know, oh, you guys, all you talk about is the police. And really, I don't want to just talk about how bad the cops can be. But it's sometimes hard to ignore it, especially now you've got the they're back in the news after a couple cops got shot to death uh, over the weekend, apparently, in New York City. Horrible. So tragic. I, I think partly the responsibility of the media for playing up these stories, um, making them over emotionalize, over sensationalize. You know, the, these really? stories, as you mentioned, have been in the news for a long time. Police have been abusing their power but isn't for that decades. What we want? I mean, Derek, I mean, yeah, we, we, we want the attention, but. The focus should be on accountability, on everyone having equal rights. Or it could be. I, I, I'm just, from my perspective, I'm seeing a lot of race baiting in the, the media. One way or another, they mm. they seem to make this about uh, an unarmed black teen was shot by a white officer. Who cares what color these people are? Yeah. It's about the power that they've got, and the um, that makes us unequals. Yeah. Isn't that what Eric Garner's daughter said in an interview, that it's really it's about the power, it's not about someone's color? Uh, but I think you're right. I mean, I don't watch a lot of mainstream media. Anything I come across will only be because I happen to link to it through Facebook or you know some online format. So I don't get to see the, the generic coverage that would go on about this kind of thing. But yeah, I can definitely see the mainstream media painting a certain picture that may not necessarily be what the message that we would portray. Yeah, I just... Uh, with all of these protests, it seems very emotional. You know, there's not a lot of logic of walking out into the streets and and chanting things with signs. So I hope that moving forward, the steps that people take to change the police behavior, like video recording them, Mm -hmm. I I hope that they're productive steps, you know, like things that everyone could implement in their lives, like uh, having a live stream in your back pocket. If you've got a smartphone, you could be able to live stream the police. Maybe the next time you pass by someone who's being stopped by police, you'll record them just because you know that it'll keep people safer. You don't, generally it does. don't want to put the responsibility on the police. Yeah, generally it does. Although I don't think it's fair, I and mean, just to go back to what you're saying earlier, I don't think it's fair to lay responsibility for the shootings at the face or the, uh, the feet of the media. I mean, I don't think that whatever their coverage happens to be, I don't think that would have really been in a, I guess, a factor in some psychopath's decision to go and oh, I'm going to shoot some cops today, uh, kind of thing. I, I just if I if I said fair. that, I misspoke. Okay, the maybe I misunderstood. Individuals are responsible for their own actions. So this this man is fully responsible for his own actions. I, I didn't mean to um, say anything different. I saw a story today that said that uh, while I guess when the shooting happened, that people were actually applauding and laughing. It's horrible. It. It's so weird that it's gotten to this point where police 
are two police are dead and some people are cheering about that. I, I think it's horrible yeah. uh, that anyone would be killed in, in cold blood like this. But what actions led up to an environment or a situation where people would cheer about such a thing? I mean, how so many actions. I mean, countless actions, actions of violence by the police against people and their their friends and their family members and just unending conflict uh, with them in the streets brought by the police. You know, that I'm not saying that everybody the police deals with is a good person. There's certainly some bad guys out there. And when the cops actually go after real bad guys, then I support them in that. But it's been decades of police abuse against peaceful people that I think is is finally coming up to a, an angry head. And I think it's unfortunate. I don't support violence either. Um, but it, it's a real indicator of how far things have really come that this is happening. Yeah, but I, I just want to make sure as we're talking about problems, we also mentioned solutions. I, I mentioned agree. live streaming is is one, and just having peaceful interactions with your friends and family and neighbors is, is probably the, the next most obvious one. Because like, I think this whole violence thing, whether it's with police or, or people in your community, it's it all stems from the same problem, viewing violence as a solution. And it's it's not. It's 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 just not a solution. Well, right. I mean, essentially, that's the police's role. I mean, they use violence as a solution. And so the people who are trying to change how the system works should not embrace the same tool that is utilized by the police. Um, because you essentially I see it as you're lowering yourself to, to their level. But not only that, not that's just kind of how I see it from a moral perspective. Um, not only that, as we've suggested here on Free Talk Live in the past, when somebody uses violence against the state, whether it's the police or driving a, a tractor into the side of City Hall or, you know, whatever destructive, violent thing that you know could result in somebody getting hurt or does result in someone getting hurt, uh, whenever that happens, it's an excuse for the state to expand itself. It's an excuse for them to arm up even further. It's an excuse for them to go through more militaristic training. It's an excuse to get more bearcats and more, you know, bomb sniffing dogs and tanks and, you know, all kinds of, you know, apparatus and toys that the police seem to love so much. This is their excuse to ratchet up the police state because now they can say, see, see, they're out to get us. And we've got to protect, not only are we protecting you people, but we got to protect ourselves. And so, you know, then they just buy a whole bunch of new stuff and, uh, and get amped up. And then that attracts more of the kind of badge heavy cops, which we've talked to a police trainer here on Free Talk Live who said that he quit. He left doing police training because he was sick and tired of all these crappy recruits that they were bringing in. Well, you want the recruit quality to continue going into the pits? Start uh, using violence against the police and you'll see more violent cops or people who want to be violent cops attracted to the job because they know it's going to be their chance to crack some heads. But I'll give you the official uh, statement here from the New York Police Department, which is pretty scary stuff. On the way, 855-450-FREE. You take control here on Free Talk Live. And now from the Cato Institute, the Cato Constitution Minute. The United States Constitution was written to secure the promise of the Declaration of Independence. In 1776, our founding fathers declared that individuals have certain inalienable rights, rights that cannot be taken away. Everyone in this nation has the right to live and is free to pursue happiness and liberty so long as they respect the rights of others. We created government to protect this freedom, not to give us special favors at the expense of others, and so our federal government exists to protect individual freedoms. That's why the first sentence of the Constitution, written in 1787, says that liberty is a blessing, even as it goes on to strictly limit what decisions government may make for us. America's founding fathers knew that protecting individual rights, our personal freedom, is the main purpose of government. To learn more, visit the Cato Institute online at cato.org. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us The future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. 
It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. FreedomsPhoenix.com, constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy, health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's Freedoms with an S. Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 357 while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up what you want right here, toll free. 855 450 free. Coming up, we'll tell you about what happened with Derek J and the court decision that. He was uh, a little cocky about, and uh, we'll tell you what happened with old Judge Burke. It was uh, sort of a flashback almost to uh, two years ago during your victimless crime spree. It's a continuation, actually, of that story. We'll get into that here in a little bit. Ian and Derek J. in the studio tonight. Hello. Yep, and uh, you can join us online at freetalklive.com, where you can get a free pound of coffee, some of the best coffee out there from BuzzBox. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. It's great coffee. But BuzzBox does something that's really unique, uh, because you can get good coffee in a lot of different places. What BuzzBox does that's different is they've teamed up with Free Talk Live and Kiva.org to provide microloans to people who are living in very tough parts of the world, help them make a better life for themselves by, you know, business investing it in their businesses, upgrading equipment, that kind of thing. We can help make that happen by you just buying coffee from coffee.freetalklive.com. Now, again, your first pound's free. You just pay the shipping price. You can cancel your subscription at any time. But what happens is if you continue the subscription, for every 10 listeners, we can give out one new microloan every month. So it's a tremendous amount of microloans that, uh, that we can give out. Uh, courtesy of BuzzBox Coffee and Kiva.org and Free Talk Live. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Get your first pound for free. Just pay that shipping cost. And again, you can cancel anytime you want. Coffee.freetalklive.com. So what I wanted to share here, Derek J., was the, the response of the police. Because what happened in New York was two cops were shot for ostensibly, you know, they didn't do anything in that moment, right? Like they didn't just finish beating somebody or shooting somebody. I don't know what the history of these particular cops is. They could have been Serpicos. This was guilt by association. They did nothing wrong except for wear the same uniform as people who have also done something wrong. By Serpico, you mean like a cop who was like one of the good cops, supposedly? Yeah. I mean, someone who was trying to change the department, someone who's trying to stand up for good. Yeah, who he, knows who these people were? It's it, presumable that he just killed the first two cops that he saw, 
Um, I don't know if the guy actually went after them specifically for some particular reason. And even if he did, it still wouldn't be okay because violence doesn't solve problems. It only begets more violence. It's only going to encourage the police to be more paranoid than they already are. And they're pretty paranoid already and dangerous as a result because they're, you know, they're paranoid people with guns and the legal ability to utilize them and pretty much get away with it, whatever the circumstance happens to be. So what's happening now? Well, sure enough, the New York Police Department officially is becoming even more paranoid and likely will become more violent as a result. The uh, story here from Reason.com, an email circulated among New York Police Department sounds like a bad chain letter, but it's very serious. The New York Post reports on the email's contents, quote, In addition, absolutely no enforcement action in the form of arrests and or summonses is to be taken unless absolutely necessary and an individual must be placed under arrest, the statement said. These are precautions that were taken in the 1970s when police officers were ambushed and executed on a regular basis. We have, for the first time in a number of years, become a wartime police department. This is their actual statement. This is a, an, an excerpt from the New York Is this an internal Police. memo? This is them talking to each other or to talking to the public? It is an internal email circulated among the New York Police Department. Wow. So this is how they, they talk about the public to each other. We have become a wartime police department, said the message. We will act accordingly. Forward message in its entirety to any and all members of the service. And that should be an indicator to you that... This is how the police are looking at the situation. They believe they're at war. Now, with whom are they at war? Not themselves. Not the higher-ups in the department. Not the politicians. Who are they at war with? I don't know. Maybe they just are talking about the environment that they're operating in. It seems like warlike conditions. If you could just be randomly walked up to and shot, that's, that's like a war zone. Whether or not you're at war with anybody is irrelevant. The uh, Chris Cantwell is on the line with us here on oh, Skype. No. Chris, you're on Free Talk Live. Good to be with you, gentlemen. Hey I gotta say, I'm I'm really enthusiastic about the uh, the public response to this. I, I see people cheering for it, and I, I I feel hope when I see that. What are you hoping what? for? I, I'm glad that people are seeing police for the threat to their safety that the police are. And the, the memo that you're talking about right now sounds to me like they're actually like concerned about uh, you know trying to place people under arrest, like they're actually thinking twice about it. Well, no, what it says here is that uh, no summons is to be written unless they are going to place someone under arrest. So okay. oh, it does seem like they may be backing down on writing summonses, though, because they would have to arrest the person. Otherwise, it does say no enforcement action in the form of arrests and or summonses is to be taken unless absolutely necessary. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, if, if somebody's smoking a joint in the street, is it absolutely necessary to arrest that person? Well, I think that we've always sort of known that it's not. Right. So well, if we a couple of cops not. get shot and these guys are fearing for their lives and now they're afraid to make, quote, unnecessary arrests and write, quote, unnecessary summonses. I see a great deal of good in that. Well, I see that the consequence seems to be like the, the outcome that I would want, like less arrests uh, or fewer in interactions with police for victimless crimes. But this isn't the way to achieve that. It seems like a pretty bad way to get the, a good result. I mean, I, I mean, if somebody knows a better way to stop police from arresting people for possessing plants, I'm really interested to hear it. But this is something that I've seen I'm watching happen right in front of my face, and I don't see it happening as a result of a great many, you know, other other uh, things that are going on that are much easier to swallow, obviously. Well, but, I mean, this this does seem to be having, you know, the positive effect that we've all been saying we wanted, doesn't it? I don't know, Chris, if I'm going to take the word of a email that has been circulating around the department and believe that that's going to have the effect. Because if the cops don't go out on the streets and write tickets, which is by far likely what they are doing all day long in New York. Remember, this is also a department that has a traffic enforcement division that is humongous. I highly doubt the traffic cops are going to stop uh, writing parking tickets in New York City. But if they stop writing tickets, then their revenue is going to dry up. And then all of a sudden, it's going to be necessary, absolutely necessary from their perspective, to resume writing tickets. 
I would be interested in seeing if this does actually affect the number of tickets being written, because right now it's just an, an email, and we don't know if it's going to really translate into reality or if the person was really thinking um, about what the consequences of that action would be, because the police, they need to collect revenue. That's their main thing. That's what they, that's what they do. Yeah, of course. And and this is sort of the point that I've been making all along, right? That, I mean, look, these guys are not out there doing this because they think they're doing God's work. They're not doing this out of the goodness of their hearts, right? They're out there victimizing and terrorizing and stealing from people because it affords them material comforts. And when they fear for their lives, when they, when they realize that there are consequences for their actions, they will simply cease to do it. Now, the truth of the matter is, this is probably an isolated incident, and they'll get over it really soon, and they'll be right back to business as usual. But if this sort of thing started happening a couple of times a week believe me these people would think twice before they started victimizing innocent people are you wrong for and are, are you encouraging this kind of behavior with that rhetoric well it's difficult to say i mean i don't think that uh the the shooter was like a good guy right he was some like a uh, uh, marxist uh, black power guy who uh, uh apparently shot like his girlfriend you know the week prior and of course for most of us this is not a good course of action right it's not going to lead to a positive outcome for our own lives and we're generally interested in looking out for our own best interests well, however chris, chris hold these that, things hold have that positive thought. outcomes hold and there's that thought. More we're, we more can come back here in a moment more with uh, chris cantwell 855 450 free 855 450 Four five zero three seven three three. Is he on to something here, or is it that they're going to become a wartime police department and become even more dangerous now? It's that time of year again, and you know what that means. Cold and flu season. <coughs> but don't worry. HerbalHealer.com has you and your loved ones covered with our safe and natural products. Cold and flu fighters like beta-glucans, olive leaf antiviral capsules, grapefruit seed extract, HHA for herb capsules, elderberry power, and respirate. And don't forget about oregacillin for the lungs, normally $34.95, on sale now for only $25. Vitamin D3, 120-count soft gels, only $9. Whole body and homeopathic detoxes for the lungs, kidneys, liver, lymph, and brain, normally $26.95, now just $20. Herbalhealer.com also offers correspondence courses to teach you how to handle your health naturally. And as always, new customers get a free 128-page catalog with your order. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click the Winter Specials button to save on our natural cold and flu-fighting products. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand it's about demonstrating to the entire country that, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's 
the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you take control here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We will, of course, be here throughout the week, actually. Uh, in, in fact, Chris Camwell, who is on the line with us here, we're going to bring him back in a moment. He's going to be with us on Christmas Eve. Uh, and then we'll be live on Christmas Day as well and New Year's Eve. So stick with us throughout the holidays for live audio content to keep you entertained and uh, to allow you to interact because we always have open phones no matter what day it is. Uh, the toll-free number here is 855 855- 450 free and you can join us online at freetalklive.com so if you care about the ideas of freedom and you like what we're doing here on free talk live please become a free talk live amplifier amp stands for advertise market and promote you just go to amp.freetalklive.com and you can get signed up there for as little as five dollars per month you can use any major credit card through paypal or use visa or mastercard it's done monthly you don't even have to think about it once you get signed up and for us it makes a big difference because it allows us to reach out to more radio stations and bring them Free Talk Live and introduce the show to them and get them to come on board. We've got over 150 stations right now. We could double that number. We just, you know, takes money to market the show. So advertise, market, promote. That's what AMP stands for. You get perks. You get access to the AMP only call in lines, the very cool AMP Facebook group, and uh, other perks as well, like the AMP only podcast. Go and get signed up over at amp.freetalklive.com. It's a great way to support Free Talk Live. I mean, one of the ways you can support the show is by sharing Free Talk Live. Obviously, that's an easy thing to do. But if you can throw $5 a month our way, it'll be worth it because we'll bring new ears to the ideas of freedom. And to the, uh, the, the, I think, the healthy debate that we have here on this program, because not everybody within the freedom movement agrees on tactics. And Chris Cantwell, this is definitely one of the issues upon which you and I disagree. Uh, and Derek J, I, I think that uh, you're also on the uh, the side of disagreement here uh, with Cantwell. In fact, you, Cantwell, and myself all did a peace roundtable at Keenvention 2013, which touched on a lot of these subjects about violence and you know how to respond to the violence of the police, and you know what works, Chris. From the, let me uh, recap here what you said, and please correct me if I've gotten something wrong. You've said that you think that the cops that were shot in New York City that this is a good thing, and that if uh, if cops got shot occasionally like this, uh, you know, I don't know, a few times a year, once a month, or something like that, you're saying that that would actually disincentivize the police from harassing average people. Is that what you, is that what you're getting out here tonight? Yeah, I think that basically these people are out there because it provides them with material comforts and social status. And if they were if they actually feared going to work and then not coming home, that they just wouldn't go to work. And then if they didn't do what they were supposed to do, then there wouldn't be the revenue for the state, as we said earlier, and this would simply cease to happen. And of course, that's my goal. I don't want to live in a state society. And so how do we accomplish that becomes the the necessary question. And I don't see a whole lot of appetizing routes to that, right? Because uh, there's a whole lot of violence in this world. Somebody has to answer it at some point. And uh, this is what I saw happen out there, that you basically create situations where people have nothing left to lose. They have nothing left to lose, and they're willing to lay down their own lives to uh, to violently lash out against the people who cause them to grief. Yeah, but killing people and then killing yourself is not the best way to make an argument. I mean, the, yeah, the don't right get me way. Wrong. I wouldn't recommend it for any of us, but if other people are going to go out and do it, then I'm not exactly going to be upset about it. You know what I mean? In my opinion, the way to change uh, police behavior is to inspire them to change through persuasion and uh, using words. Not uh, fear. Not, not, yeah, not fear. I mean, I How's don't that want working the out poli- for you? 
Well, it's a slow process. I mean, it's a slow process. You can right. achieve what you want with violence in the short term. For example, if you want sex, rape will get the job done, but that doesn't mean it's moral or the way to do it. The, if you want sex or if you want peace, the right way to do it is through persuasion. So, Chris, here's the uh, here's one of the points I'd like to make here, and that I see where you're coming from. The idea being that these cops. They're, they just want to be comfortable. They want to live off the extractions that they're making from the average person by writing tickets for a bunch of piddly crap that really doesn't put them in any significant harm's way, that many police are cowards. And given the uh, you know the, the fear that something of a, a violent nature, a deadly nature, may actually happen to them that you believe they will back down in their aggression, you may be right about that for this batch of cops. But I think what you're going to see is if this continues to happen, you can already see the beginnings of it today with the New York Police Department saying that they are in a wartime, uh, they're they're in a wartime situation. I'll pull up the exact uh, quote here. But with the, the NYPD making a statement like that and basically telling cops here to be extra paranoid, they're now having two cars respond to every single call, which would mean that they would have to increase the size of their force, right? If, if it's now policy that every single call has to have two cops responding rather than one, that would seem to, I don't know, roughly double the amount of cops that they're going to need out on the streets to respond to the various calls. So not only are they going to maybe put more cops on the streets, but those cops are going to be extra paranoid. And if attacks continue to happen, I think that certainly the more cowardly the police will say, screw this, this isn't what I signed up for, and they'll quit but they will be replaced by the ultra-thug cops. You'll start to see more departments recruiting the badass, badge-heavy types that just want to throw their weight around and physically harm people, and you know that, that they're ready for that kind of conflict, that that's what they want to have happen. I think that's what you're going to see the cops who, as you described, uh, looking for material comforts and social status, you'll see them replaced by... 100% badge heavies, the more dangerous cops who actually want to hurt people. So I think that what you're going to see is the opposite of what you believe will actually happen. Well, I, I would say that the other part of that email that you're talking about, Mike, we said in the previous segment, was that they said you don't do it unless it's absolutely necessary. So if the cops want to send twice as many cops to a shooting, to a stabbing, to a situation where there's an actual victim, where there's a violent crime going on, hey, go ahead, do it. You guys want to monopolize the protection services, go ahead and protect people. Send all the cops you want to those calls. I'm just saying that you should probably shouldn't be out harassing innocent motorists and throwing grenades at babies for people having plants in their house. So if the police want to, uh, you know, double up on their forces to do that, you didn't address what I said about the violent nature of the, of the new recruits that and come in. you threw around a guilt by association. The two officers who were killed didn't do either of those things well well wait a second let me say something about that now look the 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 fact of the matter is is that i'm look i'm a, I'm a big fan of individuality i don't like holding groups accountable for the actions of one individual oh, but i'm going to collectivize when it comes to the police no however though i do believe in like a conspiracy to commit a crime when one or more people uh work in concert to uh, to commit or to avoid responsibility for or to cover up a crime, well, then all of those people become culpable for it. If they're a not guy, covering you know, up a crime, they're taking a, a nap in their John cruiser. strangles somebody who owes him money on the streets of Manhattan, and, and it's caught on tape, and the police go after him, and he hides at Bill's house, the police are going into Bill's house. They're not going to say Bill didn't do anything wrong. They're taking a nap in their cruiser, man. There's there's no way you can throw guilt on these people who were yeah, killed. Yeah, there is. How, how 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 do you think Daniel Pantaleo walks around comfortably? It's through the protection of the NYPD. Who's he that? would have been Daniel strung Pantaleo? up in the streets of Staten Island if not for the NYPD. I don't know who that is. Who's Daniel Pantaleo? He's the guy who strangled Eric Gardner for oh, selling cigarettes. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All I ever heard in that case was the, uh, the victim's name. I never really caught who the cop was in that case. So, Chris, it's you didn't really answer. When you want to hold people accountable to know their names. You no, know, I don't live in New York City, so I'm not really too concerned about holding New York City cops accountable. Um, look, Chris, uh, you didn't address my objection to the idea of killing the police because suggesting that uh, you know the cops may who replaced the uh, the cops who were there for creature comforts, the cops that replaced them may be the real tough guy, badge heavy cops that may be very very interested in getting into violent conflicts with people. What do you say to that? 
Do you, do you think that uh, the real tough guy, badge heavy dudes are like not lining up at the door to become cops already? I mean, I think that they're already filling up the ranks and it's going to be hard to get more of them. No, I agree with you that they are filling up the ranks, which is why I don't necessarily agree with you that all the police are in search of material comforts and social status. There are certainly some of them who have gotten into the job so they can smash some heads and do some damage. And I think that you're going to see more of them uh, be attracted to the profession. But I'm sure we can talk about this at uh, a further their time because you're coming in in just a couple days chris thanks for your call tonight see you soon guys i do appreciate it and by the way chris did blog about this over on his website christophercampwell.com and you can get more of his thoughts that way well just a cl closing thought on that chris seems to suggest that this is some sort this is doing some sort of good and i would suggest I that it does no good at all no i think it's uh, i think it's gonna have the opposite of the uh, the effect that he intends but we'll come back and you can share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number, 855-450-3733. This is Free Talk Live. More on the way. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. It's the end of year clearance sale at Lumber Liquidators. We'd rather sell it than count it. So every floor and every store is on sale and it all must go. Get incredible deals on first quality flooring from just 35 cents a square foot. Beautiful three quarter inch pre-finished solid hardwood is just $179. Save even more on all liquidation clearance and closeouts. If it's in stock, it's on sale and pay no interest until January 2017. Don't miss these end-of-year deals on over 400 floors. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and, and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. If you're looking for work, you know what I mean by elevator speech. It's the short version, saying just enough to make the listener want to listen more. Even if you're not a job seeker, effective communication skills have never been more important with money and attention so scarce now. So to cut through the clutter, choose every single word as though it was the last word the person you're speaking to will hear. Otherwise, it might be. Instead of saying, due to the fact that, say, because, and avoid mispronunciations. Say jewelry, not jewelry, which could offend. Undoubtedly, you don't want to say undoubtedly. And whatever you do, never use a preposition to end a sentence with. Just kidding. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? 
Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest Liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial on in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. New York Police Department email says they are a wartime police department. Again, apparently they were a wartime police department in the past. In, in the, the 70s? The 1970s. And they are yet again in a wartime mode, which of course means that uh, if you're at war, you have to be at war against someone usually. Although I guess there's a war on drugs where you're at war against a thing. Uh, but in this case, it's this is a war against people. This is a war against you and I. And of course, that's what the war on drugs really is, is war against people as well. And so it's, from that perspective, the police have been at war forever, right? You know, they're always waging war against the people, while at the same time pl uh, claiming to be of, uh, in New York's case, courtesy, professionalism, and respect. You ever seen that on the sides of the police cars up there? They claim to be protecting and serving, but it doesn't seem like they're protecting and serving you and I. And now you've got people like our very own uh, Wednesday night co-host, Christopher Cantwell, saying that this is a good thing that some cops have been shot. I say this is not a good thing, uh, that violence isn't the solution. And Derek, it sounds like you agree with me on this. Yeah, one. it's just going to confuse the issue. Sure, there are people who are rightfully angry about some of the bad decisions that have come down from the grand juries in New York and uh, from some of the police departments who protect each other, they protect themselves. Yeah, that's something to have moral outrage about, but channel it towards something productive. Killing people is not going to solve long-term complex social problems. Well, it'll be interesting to see uh, how this continues to play out because, you know, like I said, I'm not in New York City. I don't want to be in New York City. I, you know, I feel bad for the people that that have to live there among this because it's a it's a scary situation. You've got cops talking like they're at war, and I don't think that's going to lead towards more peace. Chris Canwell seems to believe that they're going to cut back on writing summonses, and the email does seem to indicate that. But I don't believe that's going to last for very long because they've got to keep that revenue rolling in to keep the, you know, the the machine of government cranking that that thing needs your cash. And they're not just going to sit. They're just not going to sit around and not write tickets. I just can't even believe that in New York City that they would cut back on writing uh, the, the amount of tickets that they normally do simply because of an email that's been going around, but I guess we'll find out here. Also, if you care about online privacy, check out ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network. They encrypt your data connection. Whatever internet service provider you're using, they're probably logging the websites you're visiting, maybe even logging the search terms that you enter, keeping those logs in some cases for as long as five years. Now, that information could be used against you. You can encrypt your data connection with ProXPN, and then no more logging is possible by your ISP because at that point, all they can see is your encrypted data. And they don't know what that is. They don't know which website you're visiting anymore as soon as you get ProXPN installed. And you can do that right now by going to proxpn.com slash FTL. You download their app for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, as well as Android devices. You just download it for free, get it installed, and as soon as you connect, you are encrypted. Now, you will want to upgrade likely to their premium account to get you unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access. You can privately torrent with their premium account and get past regionally blocked websites. You can do all of that by using our discount code FTL50, FTL standing for Free Talk Live, and 50 stands for 50% off the price of their annual account, which means it's about 5 bucks a month, actually a little less than $5 per month when you break it all down. So go to proxpn.com slash FTL, get started with FTL50 as your discount code, and you get it all with a risk-free 7-day money-back guarantee, and ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all. ProXPN.com slash FTL code is FTL. 50. The story is from Reason.com, where the police apparently have a email going around saying that they are now a wartime police department. They are again, uh, for the first time in a number of years, a wartime police department, and they will act accordingly. Now, back to the commentary by Reason's Ed Krajewski. Additionally, he says the NYPD has instituted a buddy system for foot patrols and is keeping unarmed auxiliary cops off of the streets. Individual cops are worried, too. 
It's effing open season on us right now, one officer told the New York Post. When is the mayor going to step up? Unquote. If the words wartime and open season are used after two cops are killed in more than three years, what word should black, because they haven't had a killing of a cop in New York City since 2011, what word should black people in New York City use? Eric Garner and Akai Gurley are not the only two killed by the NYPD this year. They're just the most prominent of the cases. Rafael Ramos and Win John Liu are the first NYPD officers killed in the line of duty since 2011. Although this police shooting has received a lot of national attention, the response so far is more or less typical. When Officer Melvin Santiago was ambushed and killed at a Walgreens in Jersey City, police claimed gangs were hiding weapons in abandoned buildings all over the city and calling on gangs in other areas to come to Jersey City and help start a war on cops. That supposed war on cops never occurred. The difference now is that the issue of police reform has finally gotten national attention. And for the last two weeks, police apologists have been calling civil rights protesters in New York City anti-police, which, of course, we're commonly labeled as anti-police here on Free Talk Live. And I'm not. Now, Chris Cantwell, he might be. I don't know. I don't want to put words in his mouth. You can ask him that on Wednesday. But I'm not anti-cop, and I don't think you are either, right, Derek J? Uh, no, I'm, I am anti-bad behavior in general for yeah. all people, no matter what you wear <laughs> or what Absolutely. uniform. You know, I'm hypocrite alert because I was criticizing the media for race baiting and, and making these issues about race when really I think it's about a power dialectic. And then... The names that you gave for those officers reminded me that their um, nationalities or their their uh, places of origin are probably not local. They they are they're not white boy cops. Yeah, in this case. Yeah, yeah. and um, the, the person who uh, committed the shootings was black, and so it's just it's interesting to me that. This is not something that the media has really run with. Yeah, that's an interesting point, right? Because the the black guy who shot the two cops in this case didn't pick white cops to shoot. He knew it was a power thing, right? Now, even if this guy was a scumbag and Chris Cantwell says that apparently he was a crook and, you know, was a violent guy on his own before this. Um, so it was like, you know, one violent guy taking out two cops. Chris sees it as not a loss at all. Um, I see it as you know unnecessary violence. Let's use uh, peaceful solutions. I like your idea, Derek J, of persuading people to think differently rather than using fear. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of uh, ways to use persuasion, I haven't done this personally, but I would like to. There, in some police departments, they have coffee with a cop day, mm -hmm, yep. and it's a regular time where people can go and talk and socialize with the police get to know one another so that your first interaction isn't a death threat it, your first yeah. interaction can be a nice comfortable cup of coffee you can learn how you, oh you take uh, cream and sugar me too it's like you can connect over something that's As not a human being yeah. yeah the state i think that's a really good idea and i think that it it's probably even more of a good idea in a, in a smaller place you know here in Keene. There's 40 cops, you know, there's, that's the approximate number of uniformed officers there are here. Right. In New York City, it wouldn't be as effective, probably, no, because be you wouldn't really. see the same people again. I mean, if you're in the same neighborhood and that cop's always in the same neighborhood, there's a chance you'd see him again. But if you're traveling about, as people do in New York City, then you're usually not going to see the same cops. Yeah, so. but more more bonds. I mean, even something as simple as cop locking has created bonds. I've seen here in, in Keene and mm -hmm. elsewhere where if you're out on a regular basis interacting with the police in a peaceful way, that's going to change their attitudes and behaviors towards you in the future and possibly others. I think so. Uh, you're welcome to share your thoughts here. 855-450-FREE. When you hear the police saying that this is a wartime police department, what does that make you think? Do you feel like as somebody, let's say you're somebody who doesn't have interactions with the police. Let's say you're, you're one of the fortunate uh, respectables, you know, you're driving a fancy car. They're not as likely to pull you over. You know, you can afford a lawyer. Uh, you're just not as likely to be a target by the police. Let's say you've never had those those scary experiences that a lot of us have had with the police. How does that make you feel to know that the police are at war? Does that make you feel good? Because I can tell you, if someone were at war, if, the, if there were a military at war in my neighborhood, I'd be pretty scared about that because I'd be worried they're going to run my house over with a tank or, you know, shoot some sh you know, shoots through my walls or I don't know what they're going to do. But war brings destruction. War doesn't seem like a real uh, level-headed place to be. 
It's almost laughable to me because this could only happen with a state agency. It really couldn't happen with a private corporation like a Walmart or a Starbucks. Could you imagine? Well, We're right. at war. Well, that that private company, if you're talking about a, like a defense company that you would hire for protection. Oh, if they started using language them. like that in their internal memos, could you imagine how quickly they'd get shut down by watchdog groups? I mean, this is a an agency that's supposedly responsible for protecting millions of people, hundreds of millions yeah. of people. It and would never they, even happen they in the talk first like place. this. Be, be, because, you know, private companies would be there to satisfy customers, and uh, I would only be satisfied by a protection company that's actually protecting people. And, you know, if they're actually out actually going after uh, murderers and rapists and arsonists, then it's very unlikely anyone would start a war with them. You know, that service and protection point is an important one, I think, for people to peacefully remind the police during these arrests. You know, you're not serving anyone right here. Mm -mm. You're not serving us. I liked it when you were getting arrested where pe or right before your arrest where people raise their hands to try to vote the cops <laughs> out of the park. Do we need these cops work. here? No. Yeah, it never works. We've tried that a few times and they just don't they just don't care. Because uh, they don't care about your uh, about serving you. Toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. You take control of Free Talk Live. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. John Woolery here. You know, I've talked before about Australian Dream, the effective arthritis pain relief cream that doesn't burn, isn't greasy, and has no odor. Now there's new Australian Dream back pain cream with all those great benefits. But this penetrating formula can help relieve your simple back pain. And it's backed by an empty jar guarantee. If you're not satisfied, you can send back the empty jar for a full refund. But I don't think you will, because Australian Dream really works. Don't let back pain ruin your day. Get Australian Dream back pain cream at Walgreens. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink, providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, December 22nd, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.03 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,196 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $329. Antiwar.com reports on Friday, President Obama signed yet another annual defense bill, which explicitly forbids closing the detention center at Guantanamo Bay, leaving a pledge to close the site made on his first day in office unresolved. Despite this, President Obama insisted that he will do everything I can to close the site, which apparently did not include not signing anything that bans him from closing the site. Obama did accompany the signing with the statement insisting that anything he views as a violation of his constitutional powers, which includes the Gitmo provision, would be ignored. Yet the president has made statements to that effect with previous bills that also forbade closing the site and has so far not actually made a serious effort to close the facility and indeed at times has blamed Congress for not having done so. 
For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports the average price of a gallon of gasoline in the United States fell 25 cents in the last two weeks, tumbling to its lowest levels in more than five and a half years. Prices for regular grade gasoline fell to $2.47 a gallon in the survey dated December 19th, down 25 cents from the previous survey on December 5th. The recent drop has taken prices down more than $1.25 a gallon since a recent peak in May of this year. The publisher of the survey, Trilby Lundberg, said this is mostly driven by crude oil prices and absent a sudden spike, we very well may see a drop of a few pennies more. That said, the demand is up at these low prices. U.S. crude futures have been sharply weaker of late, dropping for four straight weeks, as well as in 11 of the past 12. Crude prices fell 14.2% over the past two weeks, though they rose 5.1% on Friday, settling at $57.13 per barrel. The highest price within the survey area of the lower 48 United States was recorded in Long Island at $2.82 per gallon, with the lowest in Tulsa, Oklahoma at $2.06 per gallon. Allen. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. UPI reports an Argentine court ruled an orangutan had some of the same legal rights as humans due to its status as a non-human person. Sandra, a 29-year-old Sumatran orangutan, spent the last 20 years in captivity at the Buenos Aires Zoo. The orangutan gained representation from the Association of Professional Lawyers for Animal Rights, whose attorneys filed a habeas corpus petition in November on behalf of the koi ape based on the unjustified confinement of an animal with probable cognitive capability. On Sunday, the court agreed with the attorney's argument that Sandra was denied her freedom as a non-human person, a distinction that places Sandra as a human in a philosophical sense rather than a physical sense. If the case is not appealed by the Buenos Aires Zoo within 10 days, Sandra will be moved to a primate sanctuary in Brazil with more freedom. Adrian Sestello, head of biology at the Buenos Aires Zoo, warned against applying human traits to animals. The ruling follows a habeas corpus writ filed by the Non-Human Rights Project in a New York State court in December on behalf of a chimpanzee, which the group argued was unlawfully imprisoned. Last year, the Indian government outlawed the captivity of dolphins, noting the species should be seen as non-human persons and, as such, should have their own specific rights. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. It was a big night for music's hottest acts, especially for Lord Chillingsworth. In a shocking upset, the young artist took home the spookiest Halloween sound effect album Grammy for Creepy Night in Halloween Manor. Music blogger Ty Vaughn is here. Ty, what a shocker. Lord Chillingsworth's track, Man Being Boiled Alive While Chains Rattle in a Dungeon, was crazy spooky. It was everywhere this year. Haunted houses, Halloween stores, nighttime hayrides. Anywhere you look, people were getting the willies from this album. But a lot of people thought Grammy darling Dr. Dr. Spookenstein was a shoe-in to win for his album, Laboratory of Madness. And that was a great album. Critics praise Spookenstein's stripped-down approach, rattling real bones together and dripping real blood onto a screaming lady. The class act Spookenstein offered a gracious congratulations to Chillingsworth, saying, I'm a fan of every bloody who was nominated, especially Chillingsworth. I have a skeleton of respect for him as an artist. I just saw him on the dead carpet and congratulated him. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, dial toll-free here, and bring up whatever you'd like. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Once again, 
the police and the violence associated with them is in the news. This time, from the reverse angle, the police have had violence used against them in New York City with the death of two cops by shooting, from what I understand. Uh, I don't know the name of the man who allegedly uh, committed the act. He is apparently dead uh, by a self-inflicted gunshot wound, I believe. And there are some out there who are apparently cheering and laughing about this execution. As you pointed out, Derek J., these uh, cops, we don't know what their history was, and this man probably doesn't know their history either. He likely just picked them randomly simply because they were associated with the police, because they wore the very same uniform that uh, th- that may have been worn by someone who, have, who had abused him in the past. It's and it's pure, not fair. Pure guilt by association, and pretty weak, I might add. He traveled all the weak. way from Baltimore, chose two cops at random who, what, were taking a nap in their cruiser. Not not someone who showed up at his door to bust him for drugs. Not mm. someone who personally threatened his life. Uh, no one who was even endangering the lives of another. They weren't attacking another Eric Gardner, just two random cops. Well, Chris Cantwell called in uh, in the last hour to say that he's he's happy about this, and he's, he didn't come right out and advocate that it happened more often, but he wouldn't be unhappy if it did. He seemed tickled. Yeah, he was he, he was dancing around that a little bit, and if you want to hold his feet to the flames, he'll be on the show in two days, uh, so Wednesday night he'll be actually in here for all three hours, and you're welcome to comment. I actually asked on our Facebook page uh chris Cantwell says that more dead cops means less aggression by them because he's he's suggesting here that based on an email from inside the new york police department that they are going to cut back on issuing summonses to people on the streets and and maybe even making arrests i say that's not going to last and that uh, if you know once the revenue starts to dry up all of a sudden it's going to be important to start going out and writing tickets again we're seeing the police uh, going out now in a buddy system they're not going to be responding to any calls with just one cop anymore it's going to be at least two cops responding to every call and you've got them talking about how they're now in a wartime situation so they're amping up they are going to be ready for the violence and they are going to be itching to uh, to pull that trigger I don't know if this all suggests more weapons or violence. I mean, a buddy system? What's really so bad about that? In Philly, all the cops respond uh, with two people, and they always drive with two. I think even here in Keene, they drive with two cops. So it's yeah, not, not always. It's Sometimes. Not, it's not too unusual to see cops want to team up, and wh- why not? add that extra layer of safety what's so bad about that well it's going to double the cost i mean if if you've got x amount of cops out on the streets and now the rule is that the it's either going to double the cost or make it so the cops don't show up anywhere as often because (laughs) if you've got 100 cops and obviously new york has more than 100 cops but if you've got 100 cops on the street during one shift and those you know there's uh 50 calls that come in then you can send two cops to every call but if there's 100 calls that come in then 50 of those calls are going to have to wait until there's you know two cops available to go and respond to that call so it makes things even more expensive and more bureaucratic and the reason they're having the buddy system is because the one cop is going to be watching the other cops back they are paranoid about this happening in a, again, and they're going to be on the alert, and they're going to be more likely now, I think, because, Derek J., you said, hey, record the cops. Earlier in the show tonight, you were suggesting that, and I, I support this. I support recording the police, but it's not unheard of for the police to shoot someone down because they said, oh, I thought he was holding a gun, and the d- dude's holding a cell phone out in front of him, obviously recording the police, but the cops have said, that they have believed that cell phones have been guns in the past. So, you know, how far away are we now from some paranoid cop in a wartime uh, mindset pulling out his firearm and shooting somebody who was just trying to record the scene? I mean, just recently, our friend James Cleveland, who was in on host co-hosting the show a few days ago as a guest co-host, I don't, I don't know if he said this on the air, but uh, he got the police report later on. And he read in the police report that one of the cops said that he was approaching as though he were like a dangerous armed person or something. I forget the exact wording, but the the wording of this cop in Keene, New Hampshire, oh. which is not New York Police Department, they were in like you know kind of a, not really he, an alley, but he behind said sp- he had his camera at his lo- at the lower ready, which is a, a term that you use to describe a a, a long gun. You know, if if you're about to use it in war. Well, right. And James also had a uh, tripod on the camera. So this cop literally claimed that James was approaching in a dangerous manner, what looked to be an aggressive 
stance in a, an aggressive manner, and he had what looked like a long gun on him, mm -hmm. claiming that this was. A, I'm glad Which they is didn't shoot him. Perfectly legal in New Hampshire, by the way. Sure, he would be well within his rights to walk around with a long gun. But that's an indicator of this paranoid mindset that the police have, where everybody who is a silhouette is out to kill them. It's extra concerning because I've heard stories that the police are hiring from within the ranks of ex-military. This guy was ex-military, and as a matter of fact, this cop in question. Well, so, can you imagine if your life went from high school to military to the, you know, the land of Afghanistan and mm -hmm. Iraq, and then now you're back in on the streets. USA yep. uh, patrolling, looking at your fellow man as some sort of foreign as the enemy. enemy. And now it's a wartime environment. What is that going to do? If you've got a mindset of a cop in Keene, New Hampshire, where there's been one murder that hasn't been committed by a cop, because there have been a couple cop killings, uh, you know, by killings by cop uh, here in Keene over the last decade. But, but this was a mundane. Been, right. There's basically been one murder in Keene, and you got this cop scared that, you know, James Cleveland, who's a peaceful guy, is approaching him in a dangerous kind of manner. And is, he he had his hand over his firearm and uh, was, was ready to shoot if necessary. And that's in New dangerous. York City, that cop might have shot. And that's even more dangerous for the police to have that kind of mindset because in, in 2014, Journalists are the the new medic. You know, like if this is a war zone, then journalists are the medics in that situation. You you want to you want them to be unbiased. They mm -hmm. record the police, they record the perpetrators, they record good guys and bad guys. You know, they keep an objective record, and so you want to leave them alone. Let's go to Jeremy. He's in uh, Rhode Island. You're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead, Jeremy. Uh, hey. Hey there. Um, I am I am continually disappointed that Chris Cantwell. Is allowed on Free Talk Live. He's a loudmouth and he's stupid. Now the oh, concept. I, I disagree. That, he's that, he's that not allowed. He is well, a loudmouth. You can disagree. We know you like him. And he's not stupid. And I, I get it. I get it. You like him. Like you know, Rich Paul. I like him as a co-host. He's good. There, uh, you are. We are. You know, but Cantwell is just a disgusting human being, and he's stupid. Do you okay? have any arguments, or are you just going to add hominem? Hey, Jeremy, why don't hey, you try playing, calling and insulting Chris when he's on the show? Wouldn't that be fair? I, okay, but that, I, will, I will do that. Now, my, my issue is is that what he, he states is that, uh, that uh, more dead, you know, dead cops equals less aggression by him. Now, so by that, by that same idea, right, more dead terrorists equals less terrorism? Is that how it works? Because clearly, you know, our, our, the argument, the libertarian argument against these occupations has been – that the more terrorists we kill, the more radicalized it makes them, and the more that we're going to suffer the blowback of it. That's right. And when these idiots go out and kill cops, these cops get radicalized, and it feeds into their their crazy terroristic tendencies. And then we get to all suffer from it. And Cantwell's out there, and he's dancing around, and he does it from your show, and he advocates the murdering of cops, basically. He dances around it, but... He says it without saying it. I think Cantwell expressing his viewpoint right before yours makes your argument even stronger. I agree with your position, and having being able to hear both and putting them in context makes your argument appear all the better. Yeah, I don't support this idea of shut down the opposition, don't give them the opportunity to speak— uh, and I appreciate where you're coming from, Jeremy, and I also agree that you know the points you're making are very, very strong. But I don't, I'm not of the mindset of, well, we need to shut Cantwell out completely and not have his viewpoint represented. Most of the time he's on the show, he's not talking about killing the police. In fact, it's come up precious few times. This is really the first time the issue's really raised its head since we've had him on for a number of months now here on Free Talk Live. Um, and, you know, I, we were a little concerned with what, uh, what kind of reaction we were going to get from some of the listeners as a result of bringing Chris on the show. But overall, the response has been very positive. I thank you for the call tonight. Appreciate it. He'll be on in two days. If you'd like to confront him with your insults, I'm sure he can handle those. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Chris Cantwell may be wrong on this issue, and he, I think he's very, very wrong on the issue of violence. But that doesn't mean he's stupid. I think he's a very bright guy, very intelligent. More coming up here on Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. 
So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about, but it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country that, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. You guys uh, catch my State of the Union address the other night? That was very nice. Hey, this is George Bush? <laughs> I'm afraid so, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that's fantastic to have you <laughs> listening to the show. <laughs> I what wanted you... to run some uh, new ideas I had past you guys. Okay, cool. We'll be your uh, sounding board there, Prez. Ice cream day. I love hey, ice cream hey, day. It's well, awesome. We should have ice cream month and different flavors, just like yeah. uh, Baskin Robbins. Every Friday, Americans get free ice cream. Now, so I don't know where? about that. Now, wait a minute. From where, George? Ice listen, cream listen. angel's going to bring it down? Yeah. What about this one, guys? Uh, everybody gets a pony in America. <laughs> <laughs> it's very Texan. <laughs> Presidents have a habit of just getting up and saying what sounds good, and then you don't do anything about it. I mean, really, you're not going to do anything. We all know that. Well, most presidents don't do some of the things they promise. I promise not to do all of those things. <laughs> awesome. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about whatever's on your mind. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you here tonight, you've got me, Ian. And Derek J. Don't forget to check out Derek on his website, DerekJ.me. He's been back at the blog uh, recently reporting on your very own court case, Derek J., which has wrapped up now and uh, in a way that you weren't hoping for. Unfortunately, you were ruled against on your ability, your supposed right to carry a concealed gun. And we'll talk more about the details on that here in a little bit because it's an interesting case. But we want to go to your phone calls and thoughts. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. A lot of people still with comments on the violence 
by the police and now violence against the police. You've got the police now on a, a wartime footing in New York City, according to an internal police email that's been forwarded all around. I've got another excerpt from that email coming up here. And, of course, your thoughts welcome at 855-450-FREE. I want to invite you to check out In Freedom's Cause. Now, it's getting... Pretty close to too late to order things for Christmas. I don't know when the cutoff is. Maybe you can get overnight shipping and get these things real fast over at infreedomscause.com. Of course, after Christmas, you can still buy this wonderful piece of audio theater. It's over two hours in length, and it features uh, name actors like Joanne Froggett of Downton Abbey, Skandar Keynes from Chronicles of Narnia, Billy Boyd of Lord of the Rings, and James Cosmo of Game of Thrones, Sons of Anarchy, and Braveheart. And for those of you who are familiar with Braveheart, well, then in freedom cause will seem somewhat familiar because it's a similar story. It's the story of William Wallace, but historically accurate this time. Now, the story is told through the eyes of fictional characters, younger characters, so it's a, something that's definitely more designed for young people. Uh, in fact, children in your life will love In Freedom's Cause. You can go and get a family four-pack at a deep discount, 50% off, by using our code FTL. The quality of the production is excellent. The actors are great. The uh, the score is original. The music uh, tracks are original for this, and the sound effects are also very good. Go to check out infreedomscause.com. Use coupon code FTL. That's infreedomscause.com. As we continue here, your calls and thoughts are welcome. Let's go first to JJ in Tampa, Florida. You're on Free Talk Live, JJ. Hi. How are y'all doing? Good, JJ. Go ahead. All right. Well, I was actually calling just in reference to what's going on here. I wanted to offer a little bit different of a viewpoint than uh, what a lot of people are, are putting out in terms of the uh, aggressive violence that was used towards the police officers. Um, my take on it as it stands now, because I'm not even sure that it was a murder. I mean, until I see a coroner's report, uh, very often people die in police cars even while they're handcuffed. Uh, as is evidenced in New Orleans earlier, I mean, shoot, just two months ago, uh, where a man was handcuffed behind his back, but miraculously shot himself in the chest in a police car. So people die in police cars all the time uh, from self-inflicted wounds. So you really have to wait for the evidence to come out. But given the, given the narrative that's come out uh, that this person shot the, the two officers, um, I would say that it might be, it's not wholly and accurately, but it might be uh, seen by some people to be a just killing uh, or a just, how would you say, adjudication of justice in some manner or another. How, how would that because, be exactly? Well, if you, if you use the basis used by the law enforcers, uh, the RICO statutes were passed in the, in the 60s by uh, uh, Bob Kennedy. What's that? Uh, the RICO statutes, uh, racketeering, racketeering. And, Yes, right. It's used against so, gangs. Oh, okay. You, if you assume that these people are uh, engaging in organized criminal violence, which is clear uh, given the, the video evidence of somebody being choked out in the enforcement of an well, unjust no, hold law. Hold on. The, the, those you, weren't the cops. You, the the person who was doing the choking was not the two cops who were murdered. It doesn't matter. The, the two guys that murdered somebody in a gangland hit weren't necessarily the ones that ordered it. But, but do you really believe so that's that's justified? That's liable. So sure, Derek J is I'm wearing a, 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 a very nice dress-up shirt and a tie at the moment. Is uh, anyone who's ever committed a murder in a dress-up shirt and a tie, does that mean that Derek J is now culpable for the people who've been wearing nice shirts and ties and they've committed murder? I'm, I'm not sure. Was that, was that shirt and tie... Uh, mandated as uniform? I, I don't know what that means. Oh, come on. Just playing, because the state dumb. just because the exactly. state thinks that it's justification to uh, victimize one person who hasn't done anything because they're associated with a, a gang doesn't mean that's right, does it? I'm not saying it's right. All I'm saying is that by their own logic, they are justified targets because they are they're engaging in organized criminal activity. When they are enforcing unjust laws. I think what you're saying is live by the sword, die by the sword. It doesn't make it right, but this is what's going to happen to these people. Is that right? It's really not even that. It's not live by the sword, die by the sword. It's if you are out there enforcing unjust laws as part of a criminal conspiracy, 
you are just as liable to get shot in the face as the person who actually commits the egregious This is the act. same what? argument that Chris Cantwell has made and many others have made, and that is that because they're part of the police, that therefore using it's violence against it. them is justified. Because one cop has been violent or because multiple cops have been violent, therefore all of them must be subject to being murdered. That's what you're saying. I'm not suggesting that anybody should be murdered. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm suggesting that the person that acted in such an egregious manner may have had a real and true fear for his life because of those cops being where they were, regardless of how innocuous their position was. So he was. He what evidence do you have that leads you to threat. speculate about that? Or are you just just because they're cops is what he's saying? You know, because oh. they're cops, therefore people are justified in shooting them. You're not saying they should, but you're saying that people are justified. I'm just saying that that might be one of the reasons uh, going through that sick person's mind. Mm. Thanks for the call tonight, JJ. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. This is the excuse that has been used by uh, people who are in the liberty movement who, and I can understand it. I do understand where the argument's coming from. And the argument is that the police are aggressing against people on a regular basis, and so therefore all police are subject to uh, you know, subject to the retaliation for uh, the aggression of all police. So the suggestion being that all police have at some point engaged in aggression and that because if you were to resist their aggression by, let's say, not pulling over when they put on their lights, that they will increase the level of aggression that they are using against you until you submit uh, to them. And if you continue to not submit, the level of aggression increases to the point where they will be willing to kill you. So I understand the argument, but again, Again, it's just it's not practical, number one. And number two, it also, again, gives them the excuse to become more violent and more dangerous, as we're seeing, I think, as we're going to see, where the police are calling themselves in a wartime footing and you've got uh, cops out there getting even more paranoid than normal. Some of the responses to the question I asked, Derek J., I I think really kind of flesh out a, a useful viewpoint on this, and I'd like to, to share some of those coming up here in a moment. Uh, Mick says, I don't believe, the question I'd asked was, is Cantwell right that more dead cops means less aggression by them? Mick Richards says, I don't believe it's that simple. Violence always begets violence. Erica Evans says, is he assuming the cops won't be replaced with more cops? Uh, Chris Pasquini says, well, they're declaring themselves wartime police now. So it seems like they're ready to escalate the violence. 855 450 free and isn't that what police normally do is escalate the violence why would they do anything differently here more coming up in moments violence isn't the solution but we'd like to hear your solutions 855 450 free free talk live alex jones here for the last two years i've been working with top doctors nutritionist and chemist to design a nutraceutical formulation that has truly life-changing health benefits so many other formulations out there contain toxic ingredients synthetic additives and even gmos introducing the all-new ancient defense herbal immunity blend crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year we have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsLife.com. I've been told no in many way? different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm me. comfortable here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, hey, hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is... You ain't going to make it. Wait, no, no. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? You're 
Democrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com you can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Attention, have you been in a serious automobile accident? Then you need to call our attorneys now. We specialize in helping our clients get compensated for major auto injuries. If you've been in any type of car or motorcycle accident and you've been seriously injured, you may be entitled to significant financial compensation. Our attorneys have recovered millions and millions of dollars for injured clients. There are no out-of-pocket costs to you ever. We only receive a fee when we win your case. We are available 24-7. If you've been in an accident and been seriously injured, make this free call to our attorneys attorneys now. Call the Personal Injury Center at 800-648-9173. 800-648-9173. 800-648-9173. That's 800-648-9173. This ad is paid for by participating member law firms. We are not an attorney referral service. Representation may not be What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I asked the question on Facebook Chris Campbell says more dead cops means less aggression by them. Is he right or is the opposite true? I think the opposite's true. And apparently a lot of the folks who've commented so far also agree that the opposite will be true, that more uh, violence against cops means more violence against us. Uh, Tracy Knight says, pretty sure this is going to put cops on edge and they'll be more likely to hurt someone. Uh, going on here from Susan Jenkins, violence by cops has started all of this. Courts not convicting police sealed it. Well, certainly there's always a reason to be violent. There's always an excuse. There's always a rationale to use violence. Uh, it's the most easy thing to do uh, because it's easy to get angry. And then when you're an angry and you're in a state of fear, you're more likely to lash out at the things that are threatening towards you rather than showing love and forgiveness and kindness and persuasion. These are the harder things to reach for, especially in a situation where you feel like you're being oppressed or you feel like people that you care about are being hurt. It can be even more challenging in a moment like that to try to find compassion even for the oppressor in that case. And I, I understand why people don't want to do it. It's, you know, the easy road to take the violent road. Well, violence is a cycle, so it's much easier yeah. to just keep that going than to interrupt it. To break the cycle. Someone has to do it. We're going to continue with your calls and thoughts here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Join us on Skype. Our username there is lrn.fm. And it's not too late to put in your order for Sherry's Berries. Christmas is coming up on Thursday, and if you haven't yet checked everyone off your list... We can help you. These are delicious. They're fresh, juicy, sweet, and irresistible berries dipped in tempting white milk and dark chocolatey goodness topped with chocolate chips, decorative swizzle, or nuts. It's an amazing gift. And you can get it for just $19.99 for some freshly dipped strawberries from Sherry's Berries. It's over a 40% savings, but you'll want to double the berries for just $10 more. Trust me, this is such a great gift. You're going to be disappointed if you don't get 
twice the berries because you're going to want to share these things. You're going to want to eat them all yourself. You you know you want to have enough to share and you want to have enough to have for yourself if you're ordering it for you. Um, if you're ordering it for someone else, this is an awesome gift. And uh, I don't see how anyone could be disappointed. The, the chocolate is awesome. Excellent. The berries are top shelf, and you can go and get them right now over at berries.com. B E R R I E S.com. It's not too late to get in a Christmas uh, order here from berries.com. You can uh, use our discount code. In fact, you have to to get the special offer that I was telling you about. Our code is FTL. So, what you do is you go to berries.com, click on the microphone in the top right hand corner, type in FTL to get the, uh, the options. There's other options too, it's not just uh, strawberries but they also have unique treats like their new cake truffles christmas cake pops and dipped pretzels so go and check them out at berries.com use code ftl it's the perfect gift without the hassle and it is not too late but you better get your order in right away if you want it in time for christmas so let's go right back into your calls and thoughts here marcel is on the line in new york you're on free talk live marcel Uh, um I just wanted to say that um, ever since de Blasio was running, oh, this is about his response to um, the police killings, um, I had at first taken this to be you know, normal political theater that is American politics, but I noticed that he was always pretty critical of the NYPD and their capacity to pretty much kill people on the streets, partially because he has a half-black son who he said like is at risk for being killed. And at first I didn't think much of it, but now I see that the NYPD is taking it super seriously. Mm-hmm. And I felt that it sort of became... They're almost digging their own grave in terms of like public perception when they said that um, de Blasio, like there's blood on his hands now because he criticized them for murdering people. (laughs) And they're now saying that like, if you criticize us, that's the same as asking people to kill us. Mm. And I feel that if they continue down this line, then, you know, Chris's stance that killing police will make less less aggression is redundant because the police are just straight out saying like, if you insult us, that's like killing us. It sounds like an attitude of being just invincible from any sort of criticism. And Marcel, are you there in the city? You're calling from New York. I'm not, I'm not in the city. I'm on Long Island. I, yeah, no. Have you ever criticized the police? To yeah, them? All the time. Oh, to the police face directly? Yeah. Like, run up on one on the street like I figure, well isn't that I what to run up on any cops at the moment no no isn't that what de blasio is doing is is openly criticizing the police mm-hmm. you ever do that define openly what do you mean uh, if you've had a conversation with them say i don't like what you're doing uh no I think more people need Never to do that. The hey, Marcel, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Well, in some cases, you have to make the opportunity. You know, go out, hit the streets, do some cop blocking, uh, copblock.org. I think cop block and cop watch are going to be more important now than ever before in New York City. And I thank you, Marcel, for the call tonight. Uh, I think it's more important than ever to keep these police accountable, to have video cameras, as you were suggesting earlier tonight, Derek J course use as much caution as you can because these cops are going to be trigger happy and they're going to be ready to shoot anybody with any item they can claim was a gun so you know be very sure that they know that you know i'm pulling out a camera here or something like that i don't know what the best approach would be but definitely running up on the police not a good idea you don't want to do anything that's going to make them paranoid make them think that uh, that they are in some way threatened by you because they are going to snap uh, at a moment's notice worse than ever before Uh, That's what they're gearing up for. They're gearing up for a wartime situation. That's how they're going to be treating you. You're going to be a suspect of being the next cop killer when you're out on the streets with these guys. So, you know, you do need to be careful. But I think what you're saying, Derek J., is very important, that people need to give the police feedback. If the police were actually getting feedback from folks saying, hey, stop that. You're not doing the right thing. You need to leave those people alone. Very powerful. Peer pressure is very powerful. And while... The police may view mundanes or the unbadged as not their peers. Mm -hmm. I think after a while, if the community that you're claiming to protect and serve is speaking to you kindly, politely, gently, you know, in a soft, caring voice saying, I don't want you here. You're hurting us. You're you're making this community worse. That's going to have an effect. I think so, too. And you don't see it happening in a lot of places. Well, a lot of times people jump from the the part where they're upset and they jump right to the anger because it's more acceptable to be angry. It's more socially acceptable to march and scream at the police than to say... I'm hurt. You killed my son or my family member, my brother. You imprisoned my neighbor. You know, it, it's 
it's important not to skip that part of the grieving process and just go right to anger. Yeah, I totally agree. We, If you communicate to the police, because they can only hang out with their own buddies so much, right? There is an insular kind of thing that goes on to some extent with uh, police departments where they're more likely to spend time with one another because yeah. other peop- the other people, you know, those regular folks, the mundanes, as you call them, Derek J., they don't get it. You know, they don't, they're not one of us. Uh, there's a mentality. There is an us and them mentality. It's the thin blue line. Right. But the fact is, the those cops, at some point, some of them are going to church. Some of them are going to, you know, some sort of hunting club. Some of them are going to, I'm just trying to think of what, you know, what cops might do besides be cops. Whatever it is their hobbies are, there's a good chance that some average folks are involved in those hobbies and interests as well. And if they're encountering people there or in their neighbor na- neighborhood, the people who live around them, if they're saying, hey, you know, uh, Fenton Moore, we don't appreciate what it is that you did to Derek J. the other day. You need to just not be violent. That's not necessary what you did to him. You didn't need to knock him off his bicycle to serve him papers. Shame on you, Fenton. How dare you? What were you thinking? I don't know if that's the right tone to take. I mean, if you really want to achieve results and change someone's behavior, let them know that you care. Um, that you, you're you're on the same team, you know. Mm-hmm. You 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 don't have a disagreement. I'm sure you, we we agree, right? We can you can achieve uh, what you want without the violence. You know, there's got to be a way that we can come together without that nastiness. I like your uh, your point on that. Let's go to your calls and thoughts here. Uh, we do have Mike. He's in New Hampshire. You're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, how's it going? Hey, go ahead, sir. Okay, so I'm a first time listener. I, I actually got the link from Chris Cantwell. Uh, Cant- yeah, I got the link from Chris on Facebook. Thank you. And uh, I, I, I do have a, a, a lot of opinions on this. And um, I think the, the biggest problem that we're facing is, is the conversations that need to be had. They're not short conversations. They're not soundbite conversations. Mm. And we have a lot of uh, confirmation bias that goes back and forth. Um, you know, basically people have been raised in, the, in a very strong nationalistic society where we all say the Pledge of Allegiance. Mike, I'm with you so, so far. I'm... Hang on. We'll let you finish your thoughts up here in a moment. Toll-free numbers 855-453-MORE more with Free Talk Live coming up. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now. Because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-856-4195. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate Free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-856-4195. That's 1-800-856-4195. Call 1-800-856-4195. It's that time of year again, and you know what that means. Cold and flu season. (coughs) But don't worry. HerbalHealer.com has you and your loved ones covered with our safe and natural products. Cold and flu fighters like beta-glucans, olive leaf antiviral capsules, grapefruit seed extract, HHA four herb capsules, elderberry power, and respirate. And don't forget about oregacillin for the lungs, normally $34.95, on sale now for only $25. Vitamin D3 120-count soft gels, only $9. Whole body and homeopathic detoxes for the lungs, kidneys, liver, lymph, and brain, normally $26.95, now just $20. HerbalHealer.com also offers correspondence courses to teach you how to handle your health naturally. And as always, new customers get a free 128-page catalog with your order. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click the Winter Specials button to save on our natural cold and flu fighting products. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. 
FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Aren't you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Well, stop using their money. There's an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. And by using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You're welcome to dial in here toll-free to bring up whatever's on your mind. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. That's 855-450-3733. Phones are loaded up. People have a lot to say on this issue of the police and the violence that has now been used against the police. Usually it's the police using violence against average folks. Now someone has uh, shot down two cops in New York City, and some are praising the act. I and Derek J. we are saying this is not going to help things. Violence is not the solution. Persuasion is much better. Being kind to people and uh, and letting them know that you don't appreciate what they're doing, but doing it in a, a neighborly manner is definitely more appropriate than uh, than using violence. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. Although Derek J, I'll admit to not being the most neighborly in every instance. Maybe where uh, where I should. For instance, when the DEA was here in town. I let them know I did not want them to even be in town. I did not want them here. I wanted them to go away and that I did not appreciate what they uh, what they were doing. So I definitely let but them know I didn't appreciate it. But There's I, a time and a place for everything. Yeah. I wasn't friendly about it. I was friendlier with the local cops on that day in question. So if you watch the DEA video that I came out with, if you search for DEA Keen in uh, YouTube, it'll come up. And you'll see I treated the DEA different than I did the local cops. What do you think the difference was? Well, I have interactions with the local cops, right? Like I know it's who these It's personal. Yeah, it's personal. I know who they are, they know who I am, and we have rapport already because of previous So uh, you think you could just be rude to strangers? Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> it was hard to, uh, hard to be nice to people that were engaging in armed robbery at that uh, at that exact moment. Yeah, but they don't see it that way. No, they don't. No. I and I didn't really care about getting them to see it that way. My my <laughs> my uh, my intentions were to make a a video of what they were doing and you, also you harangue have, them at the same time. And you succeeded at yes, that. Yes, I did. <laughs> So, but I appreciate where you're coming from, and I appreciate the intention of trying to be more communicative and more neighborly in letting the police know that they're doing the wrong thing. Yeah, and I think people need to be encouraged to use their words more often. Have the courage to speak up. Yeah, words over violence, for sure, whatever those words might be. Let's go to uh, Mike. He's still with us here in New Hampshire. Uh, Mike, you're a new listener to the show, maybe first time here tonight. I think, as you said, you found a link on Facebook, and you wanted to comment a little further. I want to make sure you get your thoughts out, so go ahead. I appreciate that. So, yeah, basically I was saying, um, you know, the conversations that we need to have, uh, people are, are really bent on like a sound by interaction. We, we got these means, and, and everybody already thinks they know uh, where the sides are, and, you know, you got this thin blue line. Um, I feel like our interactions, people sit down like they're playing a game of checkers, and really it's, it's a three-dimensional chessboard. It's multifaceted. There's a lot more uh, involved um, 
you know, some people that look at, at the uh, choking incident, and they're like, well, you know, he was he was selling cigarettes illegally, and, you know, it's uh, no victim, no crime, you know, and, um, <clears throat> oh, geez, kind of lost my train of thought a little bit there. That's all right. Uh, That's why notes help. Well, yeah, you, you know, right, right, right. Um, basically, people want, you know, the, the responses that I see is uh, people are, okay, take the Mall of America situation. Hey, that's private property. I would tend to agree, but except for one thing, these people don't have a, a town square where they can go uh, redress grievances anymore. And uh, so, you know, they, wait a minute, they, wait a minute, so, wait a minute. You're saying that people protesting in the mall, as we've seen recently uh, in the news, yes. they, they they don't have somewhere else they could go. What about any public park or in front of city hall? I mean, there's plenty of places. Well, how many people are in city hall? I mean, you got you really have to go somewhere where you're going to uh, kind of make a dent and make people take notice. Um, th- this is what I'm saying. If if you're if you're uh, if you're going to uh, worry about people's property rights, right? Then shouldn't we also be worried about the rights of uh, individuals and their sovereignty and being able to go to day to day life without being. Uh, Taxed, harassed, poke, prodded, and that's absolutely. Sort of thing. I'm worried about those things. That's why I moved to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project because uh, all of those things matter to me, and I wanted to come together with another uh, with other individuals who care about the same things, so we can advance more freedom in our lifetime and have people's property rights protected. Thanks for the call tonight, Mike, and welcome to Free Talk Live. We uh, we do it here seven nights a week, and we're live every single night, so always more time for your calls and thoughts here. Let's go to Zyrus the Eleven. Calling from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Zyrus, you're on Free Talk Live. Oh, hi. Hey there. <laughs> hi. I just want to mention something. Why is it that Cantwell seems the only to be the only one here that has a common sense view of the non aggression principle when it comes to, you know, people who are actively choosing to aggress? Can you explain that? In violation of the non aggression principle? Can I explain it? I think it's already been explained ad nauseum. <laughs> well, how were I mean, these two basically... police officers aggressing against the the man who shot them, for example? By going to work, taking a paycheck to do a job that involved initializing aggression against everyone. <laughs> I mean... Seems pretty weak to me. So, so you're I... saying if a cop writes someone a ticket, pretty they deserve weak. to be shot to death? <laughs> Are you, are you serious? Is like, that what you're saying? You're I just want to know what you're saying. I mean, did I, did I misinterpret what you're sure, getting out there? Sure, sure, sure. You're saying they do deserve to be shot? To, for... You're saying, just to be clear, you're saying a cop deserves to be shot for writing someone a ticket? For doing their job, yes, for initiating force. Yes. Yeah. See, this is one of the problems with the non-aggression principle is it just doesn't go far enough. And I thank you for the call tonight, uh, Cyrus. The non-aggression principle, for those that don't know, this is you know a term sort of in the liberty movement. It essentially means that you know you should not aggress against other people to get what it is that you want in life. That you should use persuasion and. There's it does it doesn't really say anything else. Uh, so some people have taken the non-aggression principle to mean that well anyone that violates the non-aggression principle should be sh- subject to death because well you know the police could kill you uh, if you don't pay the ticket and then you don't go to jail when they want you to go to court and then you don't come with them when they try to take you and put you in handcuffs and eventually maybe they would eventually use violence uh, you know physical violence and possibly you know kill you so therefore you should be able to kill any cop that does anything thing at all uh, is as ridiculous as saying that, well, you know, it's your property rights, so when the little girl comes on and starts trampling on your flowers outside of your house, that, well, your property rights have been violated, that's aggression against your property, and so therefore you should be able to shoot the little girl down because she aggressed against you. And the suggestion is that any amount of aggression means that you should be able to retaliate with maximum aggression. Which uh, or maximum violence, I guess, is a more accurate term, which seems ridiculous. Regardless of the moral argument, consider the practical argument. Uh, I made the suggestion earlier that either of these cops could have been a Serpico or a, a good cop who's trying to turn the system around. 
we don't know, and we'll never find out. So. Well, it's unlikely that they are because, you know, where's the good cop, right? I mean, what efforts are being put in by the good cops to try to change the system? They don't usually work if they are doing those things. But even if it were true, Derek J., that these cops had just, let's say, earlier in the day that they had just, you know, they took a break after they were done putting somebody in handcuffs for some nonviolent act like having a drug or something like that, that they actually aggressed against another human being. The solution to that problem is not to murder those police, is not to take their lives. It's to be more creative. Uh, and offer them an alternative, perhaps. I think a lot yeah. of these uh, cops are people who take jobs that they don't see any other way out. They don't They don't see any other options. I uh, think the same reason a lot of people sign up for the military and then the police recruits within the ranks of people who are ex-military. It's all these people who feel like they don't have options. Yeah, you're backed and into a corner. Yeah. If maybe more people were becoming employers, you know, they, the police would have another option besides working a job that harms people. And practically, as you pointed out, it just doesn't make sense either because, well, if you shoot the cops, you'll end up getting killed. That's an almost guaranteed thing that's going to happen. And so I think that's why there are so many people out there like that last caller, like Chris Cantwell, who seem to relish these killings, but at the same time, they themselves are not willing to participate in it because they know it's a road to nowhere. It feeds the exactly. They're not willing to participate in it. This Z Zyrus, the 11th mm -hmm. guy, unless he's never encountered a police officer in his life, is not willing to stand behind the solution he advocates. You know, That's he's correct. not he's not willing to um, walk the talk. That makes it untenable. To talk well, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. If that's what if you're saying something you're not willing to do, Precisely. you've perf you've put forth an untenable solution because if you're not willing to do it, the average person isn't going to be willing to do it either. And as the earlier caller Jeremy pointed out, this sort of feeds the narrative, right? Isn't this the police's narrative that it's a, it's a war zone and mm -hmm. you know it's it's us versus the mundane, it's just the thin blue line that keeps us versus uh, you know keeps anarchy at bay. Uh, that just feeds the narrative, sure does. and it's. I think our job as people who can see the violence inherent in the system to change that narrative, not feed into it. Yeah, it's better to point out the violence. It's better to show the violence. Hold that video camera up. Record the police committing violence. Stay peaceful yourself during that situation, so that way in the video footage, it's crystal clear who the violent person is. That it's the cops. It's not the person who then walks up to, to ice the cops uh, at that point. Eight fifty five, four fifty free. We've got time for you. If you're on the line, stick with us. There's more Free Talk Live coming up here. Hour 3 is on the way. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, December 22nd, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,195, silver around $16.06, and Bitcoin is trading around $323. Today's precious metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. With civil unrest occurring all across the country, being food secure has never been more important. Visit eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, President Obama is considering whether or not to put North Korea back on a list of state sponsors of terrorism after the secluded country's government was accused of hacking Sony's computers, leaking secret information, and pressuring movie theaters and Sony executives to not release the film The Interview. In The Interview, the lead characters execute a plot to assassinate North Korea's dictator Kim Jong-un. Meanwhile, citing flimsy evidence and loose coincidences, security experts and investigative reporters are stating it's unlikely that North Korea was behind the cyber attack. The North Korean government has even gone so far as to call for a joint investigation alongside the United States. Concerned about your internet browser security? If so, you might want to remember one word, ghostery. Catherine Bleich explains. Ghostery is a browser plugin that identifies trackers running in your browser from websites that you visit. These can be social media plugins, ad trackers, or analytical trackers. When I installed this plugin on our Chrome browser, I found 82 trackers running in the background. No wonder my computer was running so slow. Visit ghostery.com to install the Ghostery plugin on your browser and choose greater privacy. That's G H O S T E R Y. Com. Today's broadcast of the Liberty Beat is made possible by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Did you know you can support the Liberty Beat when shopping on Amazon.com? Just log into your account after clicking our Amazon affiliate link at libertybeat.com slash Amazon. You can help the Liberty Beat continue to deliver hard-hitting Liberty News and activist updates by doing your Amazon shopping after following our link at thelibertybeat.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, December 22nd, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Today, in a Liberty Beat special report, Liberty Beat contributor Derek J. Freeman of Peace News Now and the Cop Block Radio Show gives us an update on his fight against the denial of his right to conceal carry a firearm in New Hampshire. In July, I applied for a concealed carry license. One man, Ken Miola, denied it. I appealed, and this week the news came back. Judge Burke denied my appeal. I'm disappointed about this decision, but I'm not surprised. The state is a many-tentacled beast, and the different facets of it protect each other. The legislatures did their part by camouflaging a restriction as a right. They call New Hampshire a shall-issue state, but ultimately, they leave the power of permission to the police chief. Then, the police did their part to deny my rights, essentially arguing that because I don't respect them, they are restricting my freedoms. Finally, appeals are made to lawyers who also work for the state. Judge Burke's decision means that while it is perfectly legal for me to carry a firearm openly, it's a crime for me to conceal that firearm. For example, by putting on a winter jacket. Local government bureaucrats in Keene are infringing on my right to bear arms. My next step is to move to the state Supreme Court. I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to do that, but I'll give another update when I speak with my attorney on Monday. You can follow more updates about this and other activism at DerekJ.me. Support for Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud. Detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. Just go to libertybeat.com slash advertise. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, December 22nd, 2014. I'm Brian Hagen reporting.
A severe allergic reaction causes Florida to swell up to twice its normal size. And a Ford assembly line worker is thinking about asking out a cute welding robot from work. It's time for the weekly feature with over 14 subliminal and completely unapologetic cues to purchase Energizer batteries. This is the Onion Week in Review. Area man Brett Lucier told reporters Tuesday he was left winded after placing a particularly lengthy lunch order at a local Wendy's. A weary Lucier said he struggled to get through the seven item order and even suffered a cramp while asking for the spicy chicken sandwich. I thought I was just about done after I ordered that junior bacon cheeseburger, but I was able to get that frosty in there too. And in this week's op-ed pages, a local man talks about how he was always just one of those kids who was off by himself taking cats apart to see how they work. In your hands right now are the 24 AA Energizer lithium batteries you were subconsciously manipulated into purchasing. We make no apology. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. We have the intention, whether we will actually get to follow through on the intention this week, of talking with Derek J about his court case, which has come to a conclusion, at least at the district court level, regarding your ability to conceal carry yes. a loaded firearm, Derek J. I, w- I would like to talk about that, but our, our listeners would like to talk about the police, and the phone lines are almost completely loaded up. We may have room for you if you dial in right now at 855-450-FREE. Before we go on with your calls and thoughts, I want to also share a few more comments from Facebook, because I think there's been some really level-headed comments there. I asked the question chris cantwell says more dead cops means less aggression by them meaning the police is he right or is the opposite true we've had a variety of opinions on the air tonight some saying that well since the police aggress against people they deserve to be shot and killed is essentially a summary of what one side of the equation is others are saying whoa whoa violence begets violence you use violence against the police, and they're just going to ramp up their game. They're going to, as the New York police have said, now they're in a wartime uh, situation. That's how they're looking at this. They're doubling up the police, but they're, uh, each cop has to go out with a buddy. There's no more single cops going to be seen alone in New York City. So some of the answers here, and I think this one is really uh, important, Kyle Jack says, The former cop who was a cop killer in California ended up getting several innocent people shot. Mm. Important to keep that one in mind. Remember Chris Chris Dorner? Dorner, Yeah. Yeah. Remember the, uh, what was it? There was a truck going down a street and some cops just unloaded on these two ladies who were delivering newspapers thinking that they were Chris Dorner? It creates an environment where rabid dogs are going to attack anything that that looks like an enemy. Especially since they know that there's not any kind of real liability for it. They can just shoot all they want and never really be held in any kind of accountability. The worst case scenario in most instances is that they'll get a paid vacation while they, uh, you know, things get sorted out. The killer's co-workers investigated themselves and determined that the killing was justified. Kyle Christensen says violence begets violence. Bill Bree says smack a bee's nest and they all attack. No thanks. Let's go to your calls and thoughts here. Joey is in New Jersey. You're on Free Talk Live. Joey. Uh, Yes, my my name is actually Joey. I I wanted to talk to you all about some stories that my grandfather told me from when he was in Dachau and things like that. The SS, you know, one of his regrets, one of his biggest regrets was that he couldn't go back and just beat the living shit out of one oh, of those. Oh, you can't say calls. those things on the radio. Sorry about that, Joey, but, uh, or Joey, uh, you can't say the S word. We're going to have to drop your call, and then no one will really know what you were trying to get to, whatever the point was. I guess he was claiming that he has Jewish relatives, and they wanted to go back and beat the uh, guards in the Nazis, or the, the Nazi guards, I guess. Yeah, okay. Yeah. What do you say to that? I, nothing. That doesn't solve any problems. That doesn't make anyone feel any better. Uh, I mean, it, may, it might make people feel better. Uh, it, sometimes violence can have a cathartic effect, but I think the, the real long-term uh, way to achieve peace is to, to work to find a common ground, a common understanding. You know, it doesn't bring any mm-hmm. lives back to punish Nazis. I heard there's a Nazi who's facing trial in his, his 90 some years. What's the point? What's what good is that going to do anybody? I, I like that there's a precedent that hey, justice matters, and we're going to find justice late, if if not ever. But 
uh, it doesn't bring anyone man. back. That person's not the same person today. I mean, I don't know him, yeah. but I can tell you that you know a, a couple decades is you know usually a decade's all you need to have a t- complete change in somebody's personality, if not a few years. And uh, you know, going from age twenty or whatever he was when he was a Nazi to ninety now, but wow. Th- that's an interesting c- case study, though, because though the world changes and people's popular opinion might, your actions. Don't you know the the actions of you, of the past remain the same? Uh, if you committed a crime that was popular back in the '40s, but hey, attitudes have changed now. You're still accountable for your actions. Let's go to Tommy. He's in Nashville. You're on Free Talk Live, Tommy. Hello. Hey, you're on the air. Oh, listen, I can't take any more of this gruesome talk about cops and uh, all this violence. It's just it's just crazy. I mean, we're, our world is just going crazy, you know. I think what we need to do is we just need to all chill out and calm down and, uh, you know, maybe go sit down by the brook. I think it's a and, fine idea. Rock on. And I think the police you know, should be included in that. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I think so. I'd like to give a cop a hug. Uh, I'd really rather give... Uh, Mr. Cutie there next to you, Ian. I'd really like to give him a hug. Aww. He is and adorable. I'm, he's a he's a honey pie. <laughs> and, listen, and, and I have a big question. Whatever happened to Michelle? I loved her. Oh, we all love Michelle. And unfortunately, she uh, left New Hampshire. She's living elsewhere now. Every now and then, if you listen regularly to Free Talk Live, she will call into the show and kind of give us an update on on what's going on in her life. Derek J., I know you're going to be seeing her very soon. Yep, we'll celebrate the holidays. Yeah, so that'll be fun. Oh, and, uh, well, so is, is her location a mystery? Yeah, I think it is. Yes. So yes. She, she doesn't want to be able to understand that. Derek J., do you have a boyfriend? Oh, Tommy, I don't answer those <laughs> questions on air. Thank you. Why? Thanks, Tommy. Thanks for the call tonight. Well, Appreciate it, man. Uh, so there you go. Toll-free number. He is blushing a little bit. I will I will tell you that, Tommy. So 855-450-FREE. Let's continue with your calls and thoughts. We've got uh, Jed. He's in Denver. You're on Free Talk Live. And if you just love yourself some Derek J., don't miss his website. Make sure you go and uh, bookmark that, DerekJ.me. Go ahead, Jed. How you guys doing tonight? Good, hey. Jed. Good. Um, I wanted to address something I heard just a little bit ago uh, when you mentioned about, well, would you shoot a cop over a traffic ticket? Uh, you bring up a good point because the way I look at it is maybe that's just a little too early. But when you're 80 pounds underweight being dragged off to you know, the detention camp, it's too late to do anything. So I guess the answer is it's for each person to decide. You know, I, I think everybody's trying to come up with an answer with a broad stroke and you can't do it. It's for each person. What's well, their line? Just to be clear on something here, uh, the people that went to the detention camps got on. Many of them got on the bus voluntarily. They didn't know where they were going until they mm-hmm. got there. Um, so but, if, but even if they did, it, it'd be too late, you know, Um how about we just try – there's a middle ground here. How about we try, okay. like, not cooperating with the police in the first place? You know, when they want you to report somewhere for, uh, you know, whatever the purpose might be, in the case of the, the Jews in Nazi Germany, to report to the ghettos, mm-hmm. you don't go. You don't do what you're told, and uh, you help other people, you know, hide them out or whatever. Let's let's see more civil disobedience and non-cooperation uh, rather than somebody waiting up till the last minute to then go on a shooting spree. Because at that point, you're not going to make it either, right? Like, if, if they're coming for you, then uh, if you yeah. then go on your shooting spree, you might make it down the street before they then, you know, have 20 more cops on your butt <laughs> and take you out. Right. I just, you know, and I'll make this quick. I know there's others waiting. I, I think that the nature of police in itself is aggression. Um just because someone isn't being aggressive at a very particular moment doesn't take away the nature of who they are or what they do. So do I agree with murder? Not really. But in this case with these two cops, I can see why the guy did it. He had enough 
I can see why, too. There's always rationale and there's always a reason for violence. And uh, it's, you know, it's the thing that people jump to the quickest because it's a natural inclination is to use violence. So I can totally see it. I used to think like Chris Cantwell and like some of the people who've called the show tonight. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, the cops have aggressed, so therefore it's justified to take them out. And it's just not a practical thing to do. And it lowers yourself to their level as well. Then you're using their tool against them. I get the argument. Yes, Tom. Uh, yes, Jed. Okay. My last thing is, I, I, I think with with a lot of these issues, if the belief in them would stop, it would go away. If you know, if people stop believing that they had to pay taxes or that they have to listen to these people, if they just ignored them. If the majority of people did that, let's try that. Let's have people Amen. stop paying taxes and ignore the state. And I agree with you. If you stop believing the, yeah. in them and you stop obeying them, then they lose most of their power. But if we are to use violence, and I will not, but if if people are to use violence right. against them, then that will in, that will essentially enshrine them ever further in people's minds as to why, well, they're necessary. Look at all these crazy violent people. Well, we need the police to keep us all safe because of these crazy violent people who are out killing cops. Thank Thanks, Jed, for the call tonight. Derek, I know you wanted to respond, so we'll come back to that. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Lots of people want to chime in on this. This is Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least $10,000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. 
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number, and 855-450-3733. Also, you can join us on Skype at username lrn.fm. Our very own Mark Edge, who is normally the uh, main co-host on the show, is leaving town. Well, he's already out of New Hampshire. Um, he's going on a vacation with the family. He'll be back here before he goes to Acapulco for Anarchapulco, happening at the end of February. He'll be joining Jeff Berwick from the Dollar Vigilante. He's the one throwing the uh, the event. Angel Clark is now living down there in Acapulco, so she'll be in attendance. Roger Veer, a.k.a. Bitcoin Jesus, he'll be in attendance. Cody Wilson, Nima Vidati, Objectivist Girl, Luke Rudkowski, uh, Dana Martin, Ernie Hancock, and more. What more of a reason do you need to join them in Acapulco in February? It's going to be a great time. Hotels are reasonable. Tickets for the event itself, less than $100 if you register by Christmas. You've got three days uh, remaining to get that super discounted price. Over at anarchapulco.com, workshops will be happening all week, and the action really heats up on the weekend. February 27th through March 1st, Mark's going to be attending the unschooling workshop and will be there for the weekend as well. So it's February 27th through March 1st in Acapulco, Mexico. Go to anarchapulco.com. Uh, that's the new liberty destination, anarchapulco.com. As we continue here, your calls certainly welcome. Ian and Derek J in the studio tonight. Hey. There's a lot being discussed. Pretty much the whole show tonight has been people commenting with their thoughts on the police and specifically the, the recent killings of two cops in New York City. Some people seem to believe that being violent in response to the police is somehow going to make things better. A number of the folks who have responded on our Facebook page disagree. They agree with us. Uh, Derek and I, that violence is not the solution, that violence only begets more violence. It's only going to make things work. Anthony Pugh says Cantwell has some weird fetish for violence. He seems to have little understanding of what he talks about. If the police believe they're under attack, they'll be much more likely to resort to violence quickly. Yes. And look at the, uh, for instance, the examples, and we've seen them recently, uh, with these, what what you would call these uh Provocateurs, agent yes. provocateurs in uh, like a protest situation. They've found evidence that the police will send their own agents out looking like protesters with a hoodie on or whatever. And then an anarchy patch. Yeah, that kind of thing. And they'll go out and they'll be the ones busting in a store window or encouraging others to do it. Uh, they'll be the ones throwing a glass bottle at the police. So therefore, then the well, police have the excuse to attack. Plus, they've got qualified immunity. So it's not like they really threw the rock. It was the illusion of a police uh, of a protester throwing a rock. Right. It was just a rock coming from a crowd of protesters. Who knows who threw the rock? Well, right. it was a uh, it was an undercover cop or it could have been if if, if violence works in scaring the police, then why are the police out there ginning up more violence? The police want the excuse to crack some heads. They want the excuse to bring out the bear cat. It expands their power. For sure. And uh, they, the, and the, pol the politicians will more than handily give it to them. They'll hand it to them, give them more power on a silver platter after this. Anything to make the people feel like the police are doing something to protect them from all these crazy, violent people. Let's continue with your calls here. We've got Garrison listening in Georgia. Garrison, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Derek J. Hey, 
Hey, how you doing, guys? Hey, go hey. ahead with your thoughts. So um, here's here's where I'm coming from. I understand the philosophic standpoint of the non-aggression principle as well as the the concept of self-defense. So people are viewing the police as the aggressors. It makes sense that we would we would view unfortunately, uh, murdering them as uh, an act of self-defense. I can see both sides of it. The problem is, as John Lennon said a while ago, and don't <laughs> don't take this hippie as a, as gospel or anything like that, but what he said was the state understands violence and it understands aggression. It'll pull your beard and it'll poke your nose in order to get you to aggress against it because that's the language that it understands. If we want to have a, a revolution, right, it needs to be a philosophical one, one that is peaceful and nonviolent and, and understanding amongst the revolutionaries that the government is ultimately an illusion of authority. And when you revoke the authoritarian principle, when you revoke its right to govern over you, you empower yourself and you disempower the state. Well said, Garrison. Anything else you want to get out there tonight? Uh, no, thank you. That was it. I appreciate it. Thanks for the call. I appreciate you waiting for that one. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Yeah, your thoughts, Jed? Amen. That was just beautiful. Yeah. You know, there was a caller earlier, Jed, who was making a point about there's a time to resist, and it's somewhere in between the part where cops are pulling you over for a traffic ticket and you're being hauled off onto a Nazi death camp. There's somewhere in between there where it's the right time to resist. But... I just want to point out that I think it's disingenuous to advocate killing for cops or any sort of violent uh, response in that um, path of, of resistance without refusing also to pay taxes. So if, yes. if you're paying taxes and advocating violence against cops, I think you've missed a step. Totally. I think that's absolutely the case. How many of the people who are talking tough about getting violent with the police have actually refused to pay into the tax system I'll on bet, all levels? I bet they're still paying them. I bet you're absolutely right about that because ultimately they're not doing what they're advocating other people do, which is go and actually be violent against the cops. They're not taking any personal risk by making you know statements about this. Um, and I'm not. I don't. I'm not saying that to encourage it. I, I don't want to make it sound like, oh, you guys are chicken. I'm not. That's not what I'm saying at all. But I agree with you, Derek J. It's not. It's not a situation where you just go from being an obedient little serf to then total violence. Yeah, against guns the police. blazing. No, that doesn't make any sense. There's got to be some sort of soft transition. And you know, there's a time and a place for everything. The time and the place for peaceful resistance is now. It's right now, yeah. So one of the other things that's important here is that people, the average folks out there, they don't see the violence. I, I know, like, for us, it's pretty crystal clear, right? Like, we know police are aggressing against peaceful people on a regular it's, basis. It's becoming clearer. It's becoming clearer in situations like Eric Garner, but the average person on the street still doesn't see the police as as doing violence on a regular basis. They wouldn't yeah. see a, a parking ticket as violence. They wouldn't see a ticket for marijuana as violence. I, perfect there's a example. lot of propaganda to counteract. Right. A perfect example of this. If you go to the Free Keen Facebook page, there was a comment recently left by a guy named Justin on that page. And I've had this conversation with him because I'm, I'm the one there commenting as, as Free Keen in response to him. And this guy, he doesn't – I don't think he's – stupid or anything like that he's just dense on this issue he doesn't want to see it and this is a guy who on his own facebook page has links to things about marijuana so he seems to be someone who understands that pot's not a bad thing but yet i cannot convince this guy no matter what i say and maybe he's just trolling so I don't, I don't know. But it's, it's, this is the mindset of, oh, well, you know, where's the violence? What are you talking about? Because I said the police are hurting people on a regular basis here in Keene, New Hampshire. And I think that when I say hurting people, he, see, he thinks that means like breaking people's arms and, and strangling them. When what I mean by that is like, well, if you kidnap someone, that hurts them by virtue of the fact that they're no longer free to do what it is that they want in life. And, you know, maybe they'll lose their job or they'll lose uh, their house or something like that. And they just don't see it. This is a popular concept, but it's worth pointing out that cognitive dissonance yes. is the mental stress or discomfort experienced by a person who holds two contradictory beliefs. And it sounds like that's what this guy's experiencing. They don't want to see it. And if you're the one getting violent against the police, they're definitely not going to see the police as the uh, the violent side in that. More coming up here in moments. And this is a this is a, you know an intellectual fight as much as anything else.
I lost 18 pounds in just four days. Hi, I'm James Zetta. If you're like me, you've already tried and failed at many diet and weight loss plans. The 18 and 4 weight loss plan requires no exercising, no diet pills or additives, no laxatives, no meal replacements, and no diet drinks. The 18 and 4 program is crystal clear with a day-to-day, step-by-step, and meal-to-meal guide. If you're not satisfied with your results, I will give you my 30-day full money-back guarantee. Go to 18and4.com. That's the number 18, I-N, the number 4.com. Hi. Hi, I'm John Rainey, Chief Financial Officer of United Airlines, and I'm honored to be the National Chair for the 2015 March for Babies campaign for the March of Dimes. United is a proud supporter of the March of Dimes mission to improve the health of babies and fight premature birth. We're helping the March of Dimes fund breakthroughs in research and community programs that help more mothers have full-term pregnancies and healthy babies. Please join us in working together for stronger, healthier babies. Visit marchofdimes.org. I'm Brooke Alvarez, and while I may not acknowledge your presence in person, and if you try to approach me, you'll most certainly be hit in the face with the stinging nettles I carry on me at all times, I like to take a moment every now and again to answer your questions so that you can get to know the real me. Here's a tweet from at Kirkamunga saying, what is the most important thing to remember when talking to people who may not be as informed as you? I love this question, Kirkamunga. There are three simple steps to dealing with uninformed people. First, when you realize that someone doesn't know something, repeat very loudly in their face the thing they don't know. For example, you don't know who the prime minister of Zimbabwe is? Second, look to everyone around you and let them know that this person is completely ignorant. Hey everyone, Sebastian doesn't know who the prime minister of Zimbabwe is. Third, you call up the prime minister of Zimbabwe and tell him that Sebastian doesn't know who he is and then laugh really loudly until the ignorant person just leaves in utter shame. If you'd like to ask me a question, just tweet it to my handle at Brooke Alvarez or post it to my Facebook wall. This is the Onion News Network. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls here toll-free. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. Sherry's Berries, it's not too late to get them for your loved ones, or maybe just for you. 
this holiday season. Not too late, uh, but it's getting to be too late. Like It's almost the last day that you could possibly order these things to get overnight shipping and get them to where they need to go. They're freshly dipped strawberries from Sherry's Berry starting at just $19.99. It's over 40% savings, but you need to have the Free Talk Live discount code, which is FTL, to get the deal. And the deal where you get double the berries for just $10 more. These berries are delicious, juicy, sweet, and irresistible. They're like top shelf, the best strawberries I've ever had. Dipped in, uh, dipped in tempting white milk and dark chocolatey goodness. Topped with chocolate chips, decorative swizzle, or nuts. Uh, we ate them up within hours of their arrival here on uh, at the Free Talk Live studios. You can get yours over at berries.com. The only way to get the deal is to use our code FTL. What you do is you go to berries.com, B-E-R-R-I-E-S.com. Click the microphone in the top right-hand corner and type in FTL. It is the perfect gift without the hassle. You can avoid all the stress. No point in going and you know dealing with the lines and all the shopping issues that you would have to if you went somewhere in real life. Sherry's Berries will take care of it, and your uh, recipient will really appreciate it because they're delicious. Berries.com, code FTL. That's what you need. Click that mic in the top right-hand corner and type in FTL to get the special offer. As we go back to your phone calls and thoughts here, and I believe we have Chuck listening in North Carolina. Chuck, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Derek J. Hey, man. Uh, great show, guys. Thanks, um, Chuck. Uh, yeah, Christopher Cantwell, um, you know, I like him, and I'm not an anarchist or anything. Um, you know, I guess paleoconservative, whatever. I don't like the labels. But um, he writes some really interesting stuff. He really stirs the pot, and um, I think it's a healthy conversation. Um, you do got to be careful when you walk up to that line to where, you know, you, you get somebody who's maybe not all there, um, do something stupid. And I think that you still have that right to the free speech, and it's not your fault because somebody else decides to go uh, do something stupid. But as well, no, as- it may not be my fault, but if I can talk people out of doing stupid stuff like being violent against the police, then that's worth my effort to try to talk about that. And I agree with you. This is an important conversation to have because if we can convince someone to not uh, participate in violence, to not continue this escalation, then that will help all of us because the more people use violence against the police, the more violent and paranoid and crazy the police are going to get and the more dangerous of a situation we'll all be in as a result of that um i agree with that almost 100 percent the one nuance i would add to that uh, and then i'd like to touch on a g edward griffin uh quote um but the one nuance i would add to that is yes overall police are good i i try to reach out to them i try to you know be buddies with sheriffs and we got some good constitutional sheriffs here in north carolina and everybody should be doing that there should be more of a dialogue between the public with the police but maybe there is some area that I'm not aware of where the police are just totally crazy. At some point, I'm not saying people should use violence against the police, but as people do have to, at some point, be able to defend themselves against uh, some crazy jackbooted thug in some small town who is simply... Uh, shaking people down, uh, pulling your dog. I think the best thing you can do to defend yourself in that case is to pull out a video camera rather than some sort of violent device. Chuck, thanks for the call. You have to get to the G. Edward Griffin thing another night because we got to get some other folks on here, uh, but I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. There's nothing more dangerous to the police than destroying their legitimacy, and the video camera is the greatest tool in YouTube and, you know, the methods to distribute that video. Uh, The video camera and the internet are the greatest tool that we have to destroy their legitimacy. Because I don't agree with that caller in that uh, I don't think the cops are mostly good. I think maybe some of their intentions are good as to why some of them got into the police. But if there's so many good cops out there, then why aren't they arresting the bad cops? Why aren't they doing good things rather than continuing to aggress against peaceful people? Pull out the video camera. 
show the cops behaving in a bad manner, and stream it to the internet. You know, use a, a program like Bambuser, for instance, or live stream. Do something where that video footage is not just sitting on the phone. That way, the bad cop can't just come over, grab the phone, and trash the phone, and you know, get rid of the evidence. That can hurt them more than anything. To destroy their legitimacy is one of the most important things that we can do as activists. The more that we can show them behaving poorly and clearly be the betters in the situation, the better off we are. Yeah, video camera is the right way to go. It makes that situation permanent, and you can have a dialogue about that situation with an objective record at the base of it without a he said, she said, this is what happened. It was a heat of the moment, <laughs> something emotional, pulling out a weapon and defending yourself. Uh, maybe have an argument later on on Facebook, and you can talk about it on YouTube or, or something where you can talk about the video and not the violence. The police aren't going to be able to get away with as much if they know that they're going to be held accountable, and those video cameras can help hold them accountable. Yeah, and you plug Bamboozer. Most people probably don't know that that's an app on your smartphone that can sync right with Facebook. So if you're broadcasting live, if oh, you're in an Facebook emergency, now? you can broadcast... Yeah, and oh, have cool. your link push right to Facebook as soon wow. as you broadcast. It's been a while since I've logged in, I guess. I mean, I still have the app on my phone, and I test it periodically to make sure it works, but I have never, I've not set the Facebook link up. This is something I've personally benefited from. I've been able to broadcast when I was in an emergency outside of a courthouse. That is Went smart. live, and it pushed right to Facebook. People knew about it before I even published anything. I am going to go set that up as soon as I get off the air tonight because, you know, one of my issues with Bambuser has always been that, okay, great, you're broadcasting live, but if nobody's on your Bambuser channel to see it, how will they know you're broadcasting? And if you do it to Facebook, it would solve that And imagine problem. they don't know where you are. If you're pulled over and right. some cop is uh, you know, going to search your vehicle illegally, you want your friends to be able to show up with video cameras or something and uh, hold them If you live in New Hampshire, that's, <laughs> that's likely to happen. Anywhere else, eh, your mileage may vary. Let's go to uh, John. He's in Nevada. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, John. Uh, hi, guys. Hey there. Uh, Ian, earlier tonight you said that you support cops when they go after the real criminals, by which I assume you mean violent criminals. Yeah, people who are hurting other people or destroying property of those other people, of peaceful people. Yeah. Sure, murderers, kidnappers, armed robbers. Yeah, race, uh, rapists, arsonists. Sure. Now you don't expect them to deal with those people nonviolently, do you? Well, I mean, I think they should they should try to de-escalate a situation as much as possible. I mean, if they can take that person into custody without hurting them, I think that's what they should do. But you would think that violence would sometimes be justified in dealing with these people. If they are prevent if they if the individual uh, is presenting a threat to other individuals, yeah, then you would ha probably have to use some sort of uh, force to, you know, bring them to justice. Okay, so. So in that case, we're beyond saying violence always begets violence and it never solves anything. Sometimes it solves a, a only problem. Only temporarily. It's only temporary. The more violence that you uh, you bring to bear, the more likely you're going to result in continuing that cycle of violence over people. And that's well, why I support things have, like restitution like rather than punishment for, for criminals. So people who are harming others should seek to make those people whole rather than sitting sitting in a cell. If you put somebody in a jail cell, then they're more likely to be uh, angry at the system and then you know continue the cycle of violence when they get out. Well, you know, if a woman is, is on the verge of being raped and she shoots the assailant, you know, she might very well say, well, I think I did solve a problem. I'm not saying that uh, people shouldn't be able to defend themselves, John. I'm just telling you that if you do it against the police, you're actually going to make things worse. Yeah. And okay, but I, but I was going after the more general statement of violence always begets violence and it never solves any problems. It tends yeah. to beget violence over time. Yeah, it does. Sometimes it does. But in this case, the police are... The police are violent criminals. They're violent criminals when they put people like Derek J in jail yep. or, or Rich Paul... They're violent criminals. How would Derek be so, doing today if he had taken a gun out of his uh, hip and uh, shot Fenton Moore when the cop tackled him off of his bicycle and hit him on the ground? How, De so, how would Derek know, be I today? Assume that that is why Derek J went to jail instead of resisting. What so, would he be yeah, doing he, right now if he were so, if he shot that cop, John? He'd be in jail. He'd be dead is most likely what he would be. Thank you for the call tonight. There's more coming up. And I like Derek Jane. I'm glad you're sitting across from me right now. Thank you, Derek, for not shooting that cop in that particular case. More coming up here in moments. This is Free Talk Live. 
Gabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel anytime. Coffee.freetalklive.com. John Woolery here. You know, I've talked before about Australian Dream, the effective arthritis pain relief cream that doesn't burn, isn't greasy, and has no odor. Now there's new Australian Dream back pain cream with all those great benefits. But this penetrating formula can help relieve your simple back pain. And it's backed by an empty jar guarantee. If you're not satisfied, you can send back the empty jar for a full refund. But I don't think you will, because Australian Dream really works. Don't let back pain ruin your day. Get Australian Dream Back Pain Cream at Walgreens. The knowledge of the ancients. Tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend. Crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Moments remain here. Maybe enough time for you. 855-450 free. If you don't get in tonight, we do it seven nights per week. You can, of course, join us tomorrow and bring up whatever points you would like to discuss in Freedom's Cause, it's one of the greatest stories of the struggle for freedom in recorded history. The story of William Wallace. It's like Braveheart, only historically accurate. Now, In Freedom's Cause is not a movie. It's audio theater. It's like a movie that's played on the screen of your mind. It uses your imagination. Now, there's sound, there's sound effects and actors uh, that you may recognize, like... 
Joanne Froggett of Downton Abbey, Billy Boyd of Lord of the Rings, Skandar Keynes of Chronicles of Narnia, as well as James Cosmo of Braveheart and Game of Thrones, Sons of Anarchy. So these are some uh, actors that you might recognize. It brings a level of quality to this production. There's uh, good at voice acting and great sound effects and an amazing score that was created originally for In Freedom's Cause. And uh, you can go to InFreedom'sCause.com to learn more about it. It does have a study guide available, and there's a special offer just for Free Talk Live listeners. You use coupon code code FTL, like Free Talk Live, to get the family four-pack of CDs. Now, these are a two-CD set, so you're getting eight discs there with the family four-pack. Great gifts to give to uh, young people, the children in your life. Infreedomscause.com. Coupon code is FTL. That's infreedomscause.com. Coupon code FTL for that deep discount as we continue here with Cooper. He's in New Brunswick, perhaps? Cooper, you're on Free Talk Live. How's it going? Hey, you're on the air. Lovely. I just uh, happened to uh, see the Facebook ad to call in in response to Cantwell's position regarding rebellion against police. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm having a hard time kind of fully understanding what he's trying to say. He says violence against police will stop police violence. What does he really classify as police violence? Is he talking about this case where, you know, this recent case where a guy... Uh, you know, really unhealthy body, and then too much force is used against him, and heart failure, and died. Is he speaking about? No, I uh, think that uh, Cantwell and, that. and the supporters of that position are taking a more a more broad view of the police violence, and that is that the police are engaging in violence and aggression on a everyday basis, not necessarily overtly choking people to death, but the threat of violence that is always present when the police encounter you and demand things of you. I don't really, uh, well, I would say for one, just to briefly touch up on what he was saying, I think it logically, I, well, I would hope that everyone can basically see why that's a very unintelligent position to have regarding police. I mean, if you attack police, all they're going to do is become more fortified to deal with the situation. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And that seems to be the uh, the bulk of the opinions that have been posted on our Facebook page where I asked uh, the question about this as well, that the police are just going to arm up even more. They're going to get trained even further. They're going to be paranoid as hell. They're going out in pairs now in uh, in New York City. They're being told this is wartime and they're going to act like it. And if you uh, appear to be a threat to them, then they are going to take you out as well. Right. I also don't really understand the argumentation ethics behind the non-aggression principle. Uh, I mean, I understand the non-aggression principle, but I don't really understand the what makes police illegitimate or aggressors. And oh, well, I would say I understand, but I don't understand why that invalidates them. Invalidates them? I don't understand why that why that deems them something to be. You know, attacked or something. I don't think it does. Well, the the argument is is that if the police were doing the same things they are doing without a badge, they would be clearly criminal, right? Like if somebody comes over and you know waves a gun at you as you're driving and demands you pull over, and then they you know come up to your window and demand all the cash in your wallet, uh, that would be a cr- clearly a, cr- a criminal act, and you would have the right to defend yourself with violence if necessary if your life was threatened by someone in that situation. Uh, so when the police do the same, essentially the same thing, I mean they don't wave the gun in your face to get you to pull over; they put their lights on. But you know that if you don't pull over, that eventually a gun could come out or they could bash you off the road or, you know, whatever. The level of violence will increase. So I totally understand where they're coming from. But the fact is, because they have that badge and because they have the trappings of this authority, which I don't believe in, the average person does. And if we want to be able to communicate the ideas of liberty to the average people out there, and that's ideally what we want to do because, you know, we're not going to scare them into liberty, uh, we need to be able to communicate with them effectively. And by going around killing the cops, killing cops or hurting cops, that's just going to turn them off. They're not going to to listen to anything uh, that we say. And Derek J., you were commenting during the break that people just don't get this. Like, we can understand what Chris Cantwell and, and people who support him are saying because we're in the liberty movement. We understand the, the code. We understand the jargon. We get the ideas. The average person, they're not even close to that yet. They don't, they don't get it. Force 
seems to be the only thing in life that is legitimate, though. I think that's an honest observation we can see by just looking outside. Cooper, uh, thanks for your no. call, man. Uh, we're, we're short on time tonight. I do appreciate it. Derek. I'm hoping to change that paradigm. I hope that changes. You know, I agree with a lot of what Cooper said, but I would like a different world. You know, the, we live in a world where badges do grant extra rights, and I want I a world want where badges way, but, don't grant yeah. extra rights. And I want people to know that. Like, I want the average person to feel that way. And if they're feeling sympath, uh, if they're feeling like they can empathize with the police because the cops have just been murdered by some crazy person. Uh, then, because that's how they're going to see it, then they're not going to change their mind about what the police do on a day-to-day basis. They're going to support the police uh, as a result of that. We're short on time here. I want to get Jason in real quick with your thoughts. Jason, go ahead in San Jose. Jason. Hey, how you doing? Hey, go quick. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good, good. Uh, basically, what I want to say, I mean, I've been on Facebook and stuff like that, and I see how people react to these situations. And uh, reality of the problem is this. I mean, when police commit a crime, they're not held accountable at the level of the citizens. And that's the reality of this, and this is what I say, and I say this is why it's happening. You know, when people say, you know, F you, these two poor cops, it's not about the two cops. It's not about, it's about all the people whose rights have been violated over the years. How many no doubt. Been shot or, or for no- and that's where the cameras no, come no, in to change no, the no, game. No, We've no, got to no, let no, you go. Unfortunately, your line is kind of choppy. It's, uh, it's hard to really make out what you're saying, but uh, yeah, I mean, holding the police accountable, you can only do that with a video camera. A gun is not going to persuade people that you're right about your position. No, I used to get real angry. Go, the police aren't held accountable. The police aren't held accountable for their actions, and that's true. But who's going to hold them accountable? Me. You and I. That's it. So, uh, you know, it, it's up to you. If you're seeing that they're not being held accountable, what ways can you hold take them some accountable? Steps. Maybe a blog post, maybe a live stream. Get involved in Cop, uh, Cop Block or Cop Watch. These are two great organizations. Go yeah. to copblock.org. And there's local chapters of Cop Block all over the place. See if there's one near you. If not, you can always start one. But if there's one near you, go and get involved. Go meet up with them and, you know, start hitting the streets with video cameras and hold them accountable. Derek J., you went to court recently. And we are not going to do this justice in in two minutes, but I did want to uh, kind of plug, help you plug what's happening here. Your right to carry a concealed gun has been denied. Yeah, that's right. Bureaucrats in Keene have infringed on my right to bear arms. Now, you shouldn't have to ask permission, but here in New Hampshire, it's a supposedly shall issue state, which really means it's a may issue state because they didn't issue it to you. And uh, even though you've never committed a violent act, you've never been uh, convicted for any kind of violence, you have been convicted for sort of civil disobedience style acts, acts of uh, disobedience against the state. And they used those against you in court to say that, well, you don't respect the police, Derek J., and so therefore, uh, and your activism puts you in physical contact with them sometimes, and so That's therefore true. you're not suitable to carry a gun. Well, I disagree with the assessment that I'm not suitable, but it's true that I don't respect the police. However, this is not endearing me to them either. I am uh, just a regular guy who wants the ability to defend himself. I'm small and I'm gay, and so I'm sort of a target. You've been picked on. And yeah, I have been assaulted here in Keene, uh, so I just... I feel like I want to exercise my right to self-defense. and Well, they say you can. You just can't conceal. In New Hampshire, it's legal to open carry. So it's not like they're saying you can't have a gun and that you can't have a loaded gun. You can have a loaded gun, but it just has to be outside of uh, concealment. Yeah, that's what suggests to me that this is a political thing because the, the police, um, they, they want to punish me for not respecting them. They make the argument that I can openly carry a gun. I could walk around with uh, a huge rifle. I can even conceal a rifle uh, if I wanted to legally, but if I want to uh, conceal a firearm or maybe just put on a winter coat. I think this is something we should talk about can't. further, and we don't have time for it right now. But yeah, your there's website. A, there's a website where people can support this, learn more about the issue. It's my website, derekj.me. Is the fundraiser CC. there? CC. There's a fundraiser there. All the information about the fundraisers in Bitcoin and in dollars, unfortunately. I'm breaking principles to accept dollars. I, I interrupted your URL, derekj.me slash what? CC, as in concealed, concealed carry. carry. So you go there, you'll learn more about the case. There's probably a link to the full trial video and all that stuff. Sure is. And a fundraiser for the Supreme Court. Does that mean you've decided to move ahead with taking this to the Supreme Court? I have not decided. I'm going to see what people think. Uh, So far, I've raised half the money for my previous trial. We'll see where this goes. All right, so the fundraiser is there. If people are getting behind it, maybe you're going to take this to the Supreme Court. And we'll keep up to date with you as this develops. Enjoy your vacation. We're coming up on Free Talk Live tomorrow. Free Talk. 
A congressman recently revealed that legislation totaling 2,900 pages and involving more than $1 trillion was available to members of Congress for less than 48 hours to study and consider. That's over 60 pages of legislation per hour. Do you think anyone read the entire bill? I'm Jim Babka with DownsizedDC.org. Consider a proposal buried in a 3,200-page, $388 billion bill, which would have empowered committee chairmen or their agents to examine Americans' tax returns. When this horrible provision came to light, no one claimed to know how it got in the bill. One congressman questioned said, I didn't write it, I didn't approve it, I wasn't even consulted. If your attorney represented you this way, he might be disbarred. But this is how Congress represents you every day. That's why DownsizedDC.org has created the Read the Bills Act. You can force Congress to read their bills before they pass them at DownsizedDC.org. Gabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time, get a free pound to try out the subscription, cancel anytime, coffee.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. The latest episode of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, December 22nd, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,195, silver around $16.06, and Bitcoin is trading around $323. Today's precious metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. With civil unrest occurring all across the country, being food secure has never been more important. Visit eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, President Obama is considering whether or not to put North Korea back on a list of state sponsors of terrorism after the secluded country's government was accused of hacking Sony's computers, leaking secret information, and pressuring movie theaters and Sony executives to not release the film The Interview. In The Interview, the lead characters execute a plot to assassinate North Korea's dictator Kim Jong-un. Meanwhile, citing flimsy evidence and loose coincidences, security experts and investigative reporters are stating it's unlikely that North Korea was behind the cyber attack. The North Korean government has even gone so far as to call for a joint investigation alongside the United States. Concerned about your internet browser security? If so, you might want to remember one word, ghostering. Catherine Bleich explains. Ghostery is a browser plugin that identifies trackers running in your browser from websites that you visit. These can be social media plugins, ad trackers, or analytical trackers. When I installed this plugin on our Chrome browser, I found 82 trackers running in the background. No wonder my computer was running so slow. Visit ghostery.com to install the Ghostery plugin on your browser and choose greater privacy. That's G H O S T E R Y. Today's broadcast of the Liberty Beat is made possible by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Did you know you can support the Liberty Beat when shopping on Amazon.com? Just log into your account after clicking our Amazon affiliate link at libertybeat.com slash Amazon. 
You can help the Liberty Beat continue to deliver hard-hitting Liberty news and activist updates by doing your Amazon shopping after following our link at thelibertybeat.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, December 22nd, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Today, in a Liberty Beat special report, Liberty Beat contributor Derek J. Freeman of Peace News Now and the Cop Block Radio Show gives us an update on his fight against the denial of his right to conceal carry a firearm in New Hampshire. In July, I applied for a concealed carry license. One man, Ken Miola, denied it. I appealed, and this week the news came back. Judge Burke denied my appeal. I'm disappointed about this decision, but I'm not surprised. The state is a many-tentacled beast, and the different facets of it protect each other. The legislatures did their part by camouflaging a restriction 